I was walking down the hallway to see the infamous dude standing there, doing his old trick to pick on some shy student. Get that filthy hand off him now! Then I grabbed him and threw him away like a piece of paper. Ah, that's better. Konnichiwa, I'm Yukiko from Japan, the daughter of Fuji, a famous martial art master and the principal of a karate school. As his only child, it's up to me to evolve my warrior spirit and protect the weak from any baka. And this shy girl is Chiharu, the one I saved from a fight with the rival school gang. And ever since then, we became besties. Well, that's also how I earned the nickname Big Boss. I don't really care about it, but it does have some perks. I always had the best reserved seat next to the window, a desk drawer full of snacks, and on top of that, the kid was competing every day to do my homework. However, it also caused me some complications. I seem to have caught the eye of Jun, that rival school's gang leader. He bought me flowers and sent me these cheesy cupcakes every day, but I only gave him a no. Hey, he comes again. If I was your boyfriend, never let you go. Keep you on my arm, girl. You keep go, never be alone. Tomato, tomato, throwing tomatoes. Even when the guard came carrying him away, he was still shouting. You Kiko died, Scooter! Gosh, he's such a bug. Later, I came into the classroom and found everyone was going cuckoo over something. How noisy! That's the new student. He's just so handsome. As if you could tell someone's handsome from the back. But when he turned around, my eyes almost bulged from their sockets. It's... Akira. Back when we were little, I adored Akira from the moment I first saw him. To me, he was even cuter than my favorite Mochi Shiba plushie. So I followed him everywhere and gave him all the candies I had. But he didn't like it that much. Why did you give her my candies? I like Akira. If you take him from me, I'll punch you. Hey, martial arts is not about fighting nonsense. You fierce kid, I hate you. After a while, Akira's family moved away and I'd completely lost contact with him. And now he's back. Our eyes met, but he looked so cold and turned away. He didn't recognize me? Fine. It was so embarrassing facing him again anyway, so I decided to avoid him like the plague since then. And just like that, with his excellent academic ability, Akira soon fell into place as the top student, while I'm a bit different. I may have been a black belt in the karate, but exams were definitely not my thing. Congratulations, you've excelled at coming last! Again. So, Yukiko, I've appointed another student to tutor you. Please don't say his name. Please don't say his name. Please, please, please. Akira, I nearly died on the spot. Can anybody throw me to Mars, please? Man, it's super awkward. I kept looking at the ground when he blurted out, Hi, Yukiko. Long time no see. So, he does remember me? During the lesson, I couldn't focus, and my body was heating up. I kept my mouth shut while he was immersed in his lecture. If there's anything you don't understand, feel free to ask. I plucked up my courage and said, Why didn't you like me when we were kids? You're still acting like before. <laughs> I'm trying to teach you, but your head's stuck in the clouds. Focus. He didn't say he hated me, did he? My heart fluttered again. Guess I'd have to try harder to get his attention then. But things didn't exactly go as planned. During the lessons with Akira, my phone rang constantly with calls and messages. Seemed like my goons were in trouble and they needed my help. I tried my best to ignore it, but finally gave in. I've got something to do. I'll be right back. Hey, those morons. They're always messing around, then leave it to me. Problem solved. Only that, lucky for you, I got there in time. In time to cause more trouble? I'd have eaten them for breakfast without you. Back at school, I saw Akira standing at the gate with a clearly not happy face. Akira, it's not like what you think, I- You find it hard to study, but fighting seems to come naturally to you, huh? Who the freak are you? How dare you talk to my girl like that? Akira, I fight to help people. It's not nonsense. Help? I suppose brainless people only know how to talk with their fists. June immediately lunged at Akira, raising his fists at him. I had to hold him back right away and told him to go. The silence went on for some minutes, but when he was about to leave, I couldn't stand it anymore. Just because I liked you then, you think you have the right to look down on me? What? Hear this. I do like you, but it doesn't mean I will like you forever. I don't care, but I'm sorry if the truth I spoke made you feel that I looked down on you. And you know what? If you can't take my tutoring seriously, then we're done. Fine, go! See if I care. I, the big boss myself, have my own limits and cannot be chasing him all the time. But I couldn't deny that a pit was dropping to the bottom of my stomach. I just want to go home and curl up under cover. Then I arrived at my family's karate academy to see it was all sealed off. And my dad was sitting on the doorstep holding a letter. Dad? What happened? Yukiko, 
I'm bankrupt. I had no choice but to sell the academy to moneylenders. I've lost everything. No! This academy is our family legacy! My dad's life's work! We couldn't lose it! So I followed the address on the letter, but there I met an unexpected person. June! Turns out, his dad is my dad's creditor. All or nothing, I decided to get straight to the point to him. What do my family have to do to get our martial arts school back? June came over and whispered something in his ear. Then he pondered a while and said, My son kept goofing around. Change him and the martial arts school is back to yours. But how? I want you to get engaged to my son. Are you serious? You think I'm a joke? Then I immediately stood up and left. That was insane. Hey, why are you behaving like that? You're still asking why? It's down to that dude, isn't it? He's just some preppy know-it-all who doesn't even like you. You, you know nothing. He also likes me, I think. Is that so? Then prove it. Make Akira fall in love with you within two weeks and I'll convince my father to extend the deadline by three months. Fail and we get engaged. I'm the one who is always by your side. No way I agree with your stupid deal. Go ahead, refuse. The martial arts school will be permanently closed tomorrow. Wait, I, I, okay. I'm in. Lucky enough, I had Chiharu, the love guru, to help me cook up the perfect Get Akira scheme. Though she'd been single, like, forever. <laughs> Firstly, I told my gang that Akira'd soon to be my BF, and also their boss, so he deserved a special treat. Wherever he went, other students bowed 90 degrees to greet him. They tended to his every need, carried his bag, and were always at his service. But he seemed not so comfortable about this. Ask your goons to stop their nonsense. Okay, as long as you agree to my conditions. What? Tutor me again. Oh, and have lunch together. And walk to and from school? I, I can't. Okay then, guys, fine. Secondly, you needed to find out what Akira like, but he'll refuse to answer my questions for sure. My fake council survey will answer that. Then she handed out the paper to the whole class. My goofy Chiharu did get it done this time. Okay, according to a philosopher, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Akira's most favorite food is beef, so I rummaged through all the local supermarkets to find A5 Wagyu beef and prepared this perfect meal for him. Akira, eat this. Oh, thank you, Cream Puff. How come you know I like beef? How did you get in here? I know you miss me, so I come to visit. Before I could say anything, Akira shook his head and walked off. Okay. The first step is always the hardest. Next, seeing that Akira liked horror movies, I lied to him that Chiharu stood me up, so I had an extra ticket. It's insidious. How could he refuse? But as soon as we sat down, a familiar face caught my attention. June? Stop messing with me, you child! Eh? I'm a horror fan, just like you. We're sure a match made in heaven. I tried to ignore him and focus on my plan. This was the third time I watched this, so I knew exactly when there'd be a jump scare. It's time. I pasted a whining look on my face and was about to lean on Akira when June suddenly screamed his lungs out and jumped at me. It was not until he fell asleep that we had a bit of privacy, but from then till we left, Akira didn't speak a word and even asked to leave early. That's not okay. If things kept going this way, the whole plan would definitely fail. And it means I'd have to get engaged to June. No! The next day, I wasn't in the mood for dealing with my friends, so I lingered back in the classroom and read through Akira's notes. Oh, what's this? So, he does care about me. I can see one ray of hope. Akira, I want to improve my studies. Help me? Oh, okay. I was waiting outside for Akira to get us some bubble teas before we started, when suddenly this thief darted out and snatched this old lady's bag. I dove in there to help, but he knocked me to the ground and ran away. Here you go. You're already fighting again? Don't you have anything better to do? I'm not fi- Forget it anyway. This brave young lady helped me. W what? Say no more. I'm a bad person no matter what. Then I stormed off without looking back. I was so stupid to catch feels with that insensitive one. Then my knee suddenly collapsed. Right then, a hand reached out and gently wrapped a bandage around my knee. Leave me alone. Get on my back. Shut up. Come on. I couldn't help but smile through my frown, and my heart did a cartwheel. I clambered onto his back and looped my arms around his neck. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you- It's okay. Are you dumb? An injured leg is not enough? It's nothing. And- you don't have to carry me like this. Am I heavy? What? <laughs> if I say yes, will you jump off? No way. 
After that day, Akira changed towards me. He joined me for lunch and even gave me a cute cupcake, and agreed to go to Cat Cafe with me, even though he's allergic. And the classes went so smoothly. He was sweet like a lollipop and answered to all my silly questions. One time, I even accidentally saw him putting a lot of bandages in my locker. Aww. Winning the bet didn't seem so impossible then, but suddenly a girl approached him. It was Amaya, the school's popular girl. They chewed the fat. Then she leaned closer and whispered something to him. His face suddenly turned cold. Then he walked away. I was about to go after him when my phone beeped. Can't tutor you today. I have a play audition. So, turns out Akira and Amaya were both in this play. Fine, if Akira's Romeo, then I must be Juliet. I made it to the final round with my big boss energy, which meant I got to act out a scene with Akira to see who got the female lead between me and Amaya. Oh dear, look at them, being all clingy for what? That snake was all over my poor Akira like a rash. Ugh, if Chiharu hadn't constantly held me back, I'd have jumped there and given her a piece of my mind. And now, it's time for me to shine. But why is Akira's face darkened? It's okay, maybe he's trying to be professional? My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love. My love, as adoring as, as a puppy dog's nose. Um, yes, so I may have forgotten the words, but it wasn't that bad. <laughs> he may pick me for my quick thinking, and I choose Amaya, miss. Hey, why did you pick her? You shouldn't ask me, ask yourself instead. Then he left with Amaya without glancing at me. But today is the end of the two-week deadline. I thought you'd have some feelings for me too. It was pouring rain. I trudged home, all collapsed, tears and rain falling down all over my face. It was all over. The bed I play, the boy I love. I should have known better that it was me onto a loser right from the outset. Through my teary eyes, I saw June running towards me. Yukiko, what's wrong? Tell me. I, I lost. What? The bet between us. I lost it. I was wrong about everything. Who cares about the bet? You might get a cold, you know. Get inside. But why you're here? I don't care if you think it's too late. I'm telling you anyway. I know that I'm not perfect like him. I do say the wrong thing. I forget all the time, but I... I can protect and will never hurt you. So will you... marry me? My head was spinning, and in a moment of weakness, I said yes. At least I can save my dad's school and be with the right person who truly cares about me, instead of chasing some jerk who thought so low of me. I confided in Chiharu and my family about this, but kept it a secret from everyone else. <sighs> my father didn't approve it at first, but seeing my determination, he reluctantly agreed. It was our fitting day. I was with June discussing our wedding, but he seemed distracted and kept checking his phone. Then he said he had to take a call and hurried out. Sensing something was up, I followed him. Huh? Why is he talking to Amaya? You have to thank me for your new fiancé. I told Akira about your bet. Um, excellent job, as promised. It's not about the money. It's about making Akira mine. I don't get why both you and my beautiful Yukiko like that dude so much. Anyway, Yukiko's waiting for me. Gotta go. I couldn't believe what was in front of me. What the heck are you doing here? So it's you who made up everything the whole time? No, Yukiko. Let me explain. I trusted you, June. But look what you've done. You know what? You win. Do your worst. I don't care anymore. Then I ran home as fast as I could. Why do boys all fool me around like that? Right when I felt more disheartened than ever, I met the one that I didn't want to see the most. What was Akira doing here? Yukiko, let's talk. We have nothing to talk about. Chiharu told me what you're doing. You can't marry June. You liked me, so you mustn't fall for another one that easily. What? So you're the commander of my feelings now? Aren't you with Amaya? I'm not, and I never did. Listen, I was so angry to find out I was just part of your bet with June, so I ignored you. But then Chiharu told me why you did it and made me understand. So what? Anyway, you never liked me. I'm not gentle and too fierce, as you said before. Don't try to pity me. I don't. It's that I do like you. At first, I thought you were the type of person who'd use violence to solve any problem. But the more I got to know you, the more I learned about your pure heart. I shouldn't have judged you so quickly. I'm sorry. What just happened? I might be dreaming? But no, Akira, my seven-year crush, just confessed his love with me. So, Akira and I got together. June was furious about it, but he kept his word, and now my dad has three months to pay off his debt. I'm helping him out by teaching karate classes to earn money, something I really enjoy. Everything was great, too great, until... Yukiko, I gotta tell you something. I... I have to go abroad to study. I'll leave. Tomorrow. What? I don't understand. Why so sudden? I prepared for it months ago, but I couldn't tell you. 
I didn't want to make you sad. Will you wait for me? Of course not. I may get bored and start liking another by that time. It's time. I stood still watching the train pass by until I noticed Akira's melancholy smile. I liked you seven years ago, and now I still do. So of course I can wait for you. Come back soon, Akira. You are watching the incredible Barry's Blue. I'm Sonya, the super talented lead vocalist, and that guy over there rocking the guitar is Eric, my boyfriend. He's also our composer and backing vocalist. Yep, my man's good at everything, just like me. Actually, he's the one who discovered my vocal talent and helped me on my road to fame. Our debut album exploded onto the charts. And the rest is history. Eric asked me to be his girlfriend right on stage after our set. I don't know who was more excited, me or my adoring fans. Everything was perfect. And then our next album flopped. I guess all that pressure had interrupted Eric's writing process. I tried to send him positive energy. We had a big show coming up to debut our new single and start our comeback. Who knows when the sun will rise again, right? But during our performance, as Eric stepped back to give me the spotlight, I stepped forward and suddenly slipped and fell. S Sonya, your nose, it's crooked. I was rushed into surgery, but my nose looked like a lightning bolt. I can't look like this. I must be beautiful. You'll always be the cutest girl to me. No need to worry, we can still fix it. But right after that, the photo of my busted nose hit the headlines. I got ridiculed for praising natural beauty and then getting plastic surgery. What vultures! I had to upload the video of me slipping to end these rumors, but they claimed I did it on purpose to get attention. What on earth? We thought all that drama was finally over, but no. Right when my nose healed, my chubby pre-puberty secondary school photo appeared all over the internet, which sparked rumors about me having my whole body reconstructed. Some anonymous posts even made up that I was hot-tempered and snooty to band crew and waiting staff. I mean, maybe I could be a bit abrupt, but I was famous, so I was allowed to get what I wanted. Then, Let's Cancel Sonya began to circulate. Do these tragic people have nothing better to do than gossip about me? But my fans took notice, and a load of our tour tickets got cancelled. My manager freaked out and made me go on leave until the rumors died down. How ridiculous! Worse still, they were actually going to try to replace me? The beautiful, one-of-a-kind lead vocalist? How dare they do this to me? I am the band! Hang in there, babe. I promise I'll find a way to get you back. Obviously, my photos didn't leak themselves. Some jerk did this, and it's now my life mission to track them down and make them pay. Okay, so from my internet searching, I traced the original rumor to this group of my anti-fans. Can you believe they actually met up at this cafe once a month just to badmouth me? They even had a schedule. How ridiculous! What had I ever done to them? Disguising myself, I showed up to find out more clues. Hmm, inside were those terrible leaked pictures of me. Jeez, these people clearly had way too much time on their hands. Wait, this guy looks familiar. Is he... Owen? My high school crush? He was my senior in the music club and a super talented singer, guitarist, and composer. But how come he's my anti-fan? I never even spoke to him. The group buzzed about how pretentious I am. They even said Eric and I were fake dating just to cover up the news about our latest album flop. Ahem. Obviously, our love is real. I never tire of hearing trash talking about that Eric guy's songs, but it's closing time. If you posted about Barry's Blue, please claim your money from the counter before leaving. What? Owen actually paid them to slander my band? Why was he so intent on ruining my career? Did he have a personal vendetta against me? I just had to find my own way to figure all this out. Making myself one of them should do it. I immediately called to apply for the job, and I got it. Showtime! It's important to look the part, so I dressed up as this innocent-looking girl for my first shift. Thanks to the magic of makeup, even I could hardly recognize myself. Call me Summer from now on. After the introduction, Owen immediately gave me tons of work. I had to do the heavy lifting and stinky, dirty work. I was a pampered star, not a grunt. Ugh, he's such an exploitive boss. I must have been crazy to have ever crushed on him. In the evening, the anti-fan group showed up again, followed by a familiar face. It's Rena? 
Owen's little sister. Back in high school, she was quite arrogant. It seemed like nothing had changed. Did you know that Sonya was such a weirdo in high school? Now that she's famous, she's acting like she's above everyone else. Stop right there, carrot hair. What's your name? Um, I'm Summer. So, Summer, here we've got a special requirement for every newbie. You have to pass the anti-fan test. Tell us, what do you think's the most irritating thing about Sonya? Ugh, now I have to defame myself? Actually, I was Sonya's childhood friend. Well, just a neighbor. She was the worst kid in the neighborhood. What did Sonya look like when she was young? And how was her personality? She was chubby and cruel to other kids. She threw bugs at them and never shared her toys. Take notes, guys. Remember to cite the source as Sonya's close neighbor. You can get some bonus, too, for contributing useful information like this. Was Rena also involved in this, along with her brother? When Rena left, the other anti-fans Caleb, Violet, and June still didn't leave, but turned to the stage and started tuning the instruments? What? They've composed a whole song to mock me, not only about my surgery rumors, but also that I was a vain, hot-tempered, competitive, talentless, disrespectful, and never used my abundant money to help others. Her music was good, but the insolence killed their skills. I'm curious, why do people hate Sonya that much? She's rude and her music sucks. Yeah, her natural voice is good, but it doesn't have any emotions. She probably doesn't know anything about love and doesn't have any friends either. Those comments from the anti-fans got me thinking. I suppose I do find it hard to open up to people, and I can be a bit hot-headed sometimes, but am I really that unlikable? Ugh, not the nose again, please! Huh? Owen? First you break the cups, now you're wasting sugar. Sugar? Seriously? Aren't you even going to ask if I'm hurt? If I leave here with just a scratch, this place will be finished, you know. This place was fine until you showed up. At least, Summer, you should learn how to apologize and thank. Suddenly, the anti-fan's words echoed in my head. As Summer, Owen still saw how much of a diva I was. That means, as Sonya, I must have been so despicable. Um, I'm sorry. I should have thanked you for helping me. Hmm, that's okay. I'm glad you're not hurt. Don't forget Rena's reward at the counter. Take it before you go. Why do you have to pay others to badmouth Sonya? I'm only going along with all this for my sister, but it brings more customers in, so whatever. So the person behind this is Rena? I don't think so. Someone must be pulling her strings. But who? I don't know. Why are you so concerned, Summer? I was just curious. <laughs> I used to think badly about Owen, but beneath his cold front, he's kind of sweet and caring. Just like years ago. I was trying to escape the rain and bumped into him. He saved me from falling. Didn't care how sweaty I was and even gave me his umbrella. But in front of my crush, I was too shy and embarrassed to say anything and hurried off. Since then, I didn't feel so uncomfortable hearing the anti-fans slate me and our band's decline. It was almost all true anyway. At least this way, I could learn from my past mistakes and become a way better person. Flowers grow in the strangest of places, right? Yeah. These anti-fans actually became my friends. Playing with them was way more fun than with the berries somehow. Okay guys, you need to share your music with the world. So, I signed up our budding band for a local music competition. Well, what? But we're not professionals. Do you really think we can win? Who cares? I always wanted to perform on a big stage, but what are we gonna play? Use one of my songs if you want. I hear the payout is pretty good. Ooh, I love your songs. We practiced together every night, and everyone was so focused on this, they didn't post bad rumors about me anymore. Owen is truly a genius. Listening to him playing his intros always gave me goosebumps. And so, the image of a cute, talented Owen reappeared in my mind. Oh no, wake up, Sonya, you already have a boyfriend! Eric? Speaking of Eric, he's been ignoring all of my calls. I get it, he's busy rehearsing for the show, but didn't he promise to find a way to bring me back? Oh! I see. You're too busy playing bands to post anything. We have a show this weekend. You started this, didn't you, Summer? I knew you were trouble from the beginning. Get out of here. I'm on her side. Are you going to kick me out too? Don't you see I'm doing this for you? Did you forget that Eric stole your songs and used them for his debut album? Rena, don't you think I already know what you're up to? You and that Eric guy are seeing each other, right? Doesn't he want you to spread rumors so he can replace Sonya, his current girlfriend? He says if I succeed, her place in the band will be mine. 
An affair is one thing, but he can't help you shine with that tuneless music. That's why I need your songs! Owen, just give me a few and everything will go smoothly! At that moment, it all became clear. The only album that made a name for the Berries was actually stolen. And worse still, the person behind my plummeting career was my own boyfriend. That jerk Eric craves fame and would never let himself get caught up in a love triangle scandal. You know how important public opinion is to him. He's using you, and as soon as you give him what he wants, he'll drop you without a thought. I'm not that easily replaceable. What do you mean, Summer? I'm sorry for lying about who I really am, but not everything is fake. I wish you could feel it. Pass my words to him. I'm out. And you, Rena? That jerk doesn't deserve any of our love or trust. Even if I didn't want to go back to being the famous Sonya, I couldn't continue to be the carefree Summer either. I didn't realize they were there. They must have heard everything. You're Sonya? Not Summer? All this time? You lied to us! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you or trick you. Your words made me want to change myself for the better. And your music taught and inspired me a lot. Caleb, Violet, June, I just want to be friends with you. Who wants to be your friend, you liar? I may have found out the truth about myself and Eric, but now I've lost my career, my friends, my boss, everything. I made such a mess of everything, and I didn't know how to fix it. I don't deserve to be Sonya, or even Summer. It must be a delivery guy. I barely had the energy to get up and open the door. Standing in front of me was... Owen? Did he come all the way here just to see me? Some... Sonya. I've been thinking a lot about your band and Eric and... I realized that this isn't your fault. You can't let Eric win. You're too talented for that. If you show everyone your true self, I just know they'll love you. Actually, there's one thing I want to confess to you. I used to have a crush on you in high school, but you probably didn't even know I existed. Really? That's so dumb. What do you mean? Actually, at that time I liked you too. You were so cute and shy with that beautiful voice. But when I came closer to talk to you, you just ran away. If I had been more confident and braver, maybe we could have become something different. What about now? I mean, do you still want to sing my song? It'll be an honor. Your song is always special. Owen pulled me to the competition and tenderly strapped the bass on for me. Going out there without the rest of the band seemed terrifying, but we couldn't give up. Owen was about to lead me on stage when Rena rushed over to us and grabbed my arm. Sonia, I messed up. It's true that Eric was using me, and I had been so blind to trust him that much. I've corrected the misinformation about you. I was hugging her when the rest of the anti-fans appeared. I apologized to them how I was now a better version of myself because of them. Turns out we really like Summer, so we forgive you. Now we're ready to rock the night. You can't sing with them, Sonya. That song is supposed to be the theme song in our next album. Eric! It's Owen's song, not yours! And didn't Rena tell you that I no longer give a damn about your band? I did! Seems he wasn't listening. We've published your dirty plan all over the forums, so everyone can see what a jerk you are. No! You have to come with me! Tell them you made it all up! Leave her alone! I won't let you take anything from me again. My song, or my girl. She's our friend now, so excuse us. We need to get on stage and perform our song. I can't believe I'm back on stage again. Only this time, it's so much better. My bandmates are awesome. The song is amazing, and the crowd is going wild. I saw Eric shamefully disappear through the crowd. Tough luck. That's what being a big, slimy liar gets you. Toward the end of the song, Owen pulled me close to him and the crowd went silent. All I could hear was the beating of my heart when he gave me the best kiss ever. at this hour. Orla, your sister is having a wedding this weekend. Make arrangements to attend. My <gasps> sister Rowan is having a what now? She had never had a date, and she's only 19. Are you still listening, Orla? Surely you have a boyfriend by now, so bring him along. Boyfriend? Yeah, right. As if I haven't been absolutely caught up with school lately. No matter what I did, in mom's eyes, I was always the idle one, who partied around with boys, while Rowan was obedient and hardworking. Ugh! You see, my parents divorced ages ago, so I live with my father in Atlanta, and my mom and sister Rowan live in the suburbs of Denver with my grandma. It's been a long time since I've met her, so I wouldn't mind paying a visit on this occasion. Only, 
where am I meant to find a guy at this short notice? My dear hometown, it's been a hot minute. Oh, there's Paul. Sorry I kept you waiting. Let's go, gorgeous. Let me introduce my boyfriend, a local college boy that I found on the internet. Even though we're on business terms, look at him. Handsome, gallant, and polite. I hit the jackpot. As we pulled up at the house, I saw my grandma waiting outside with a casual looking guy. Oh, he must be my future brother-in-law. I happily ran over to hug grandma. Rowan, you're back. Mata has been waiting for you. My, my, look at our match made in heaven. Is she confusing me with Rowan? I was about to correct her when suddenly the guy pulled me close and said, We are indeed a charming couple, aren't we, honey? Excuse me? Where is he putting his hand on? And is his eyesight just as bad as grandma's to think I was Rowan? Just then, Rowan stepped forward. But strangely, she just smiled at us, then linked arms with Paul. And this is my boyfriend, grandma. Do you think we look great together? What's wrong with everyone? Had I been zapped into some parallel universe or something? Suddenly, Rowan dragged me across the garden. Then she told me how Grandma had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, which had progressed so quickly recently, meaning sometimes she forgets. Other times she remembers, muddling everyone and everything. Not wanting to upset or confuse her, my mom and sister decided to act according to Grandma's memories, including this wedding. And of course, that Mata guy is not my sister's real fiance, just a close classmate. But now she's confusing the two of us. So the lead role in this wedding play is yours now. Grandma's memory was deteriorating. Yeah, that sucks. But was a fake wedding necessary? Also, the thought of pairing up with that rude Mata guy sickened me. No way! Listen to your sister, kid. Everyone is doing it for Grandma. Did he just call me kid? Okay, that's it. This guy needs to know his place. But before I could jump at him, both my parents appeared and started lecturing me. Ugh, whatever. I stood my ground. Faking a marriage is ridiculous. Happy now? Dad's little girl is acting spoiled again. Please, I raised her just fine. And you, if you'd taken care of your mother better, she wouldn't have been this way. Not again. They only see each other once every couple of years, but the bickering always followed almost instantly. Ugh. What's going on? You two have never been at odds. What's wrong? At the sight of Grandma, Mom and Dad suddenly took a 180. A moment ago, they were screaming each other's heads off, but now they're being all smiley, lovey-dovey. How ridiculous. But did Grandma really not remember that my parents were divorced? Her condition seemed to be as bad as they said. This meant I had no choice but to go along with their plan to make her happy. However, I was no professional actor. Constantly improvising according to Grandma's memories was not easy, especially when I was stuck with the annoying Maida for a scene partner. My mind was too full of thoughts to sleep properly, so I got up extra early and went for a stroll in the garden. Out of nowhere, Maida ran to me and grabbed my hand. Did you sleep well last night, Bay? Huh? Who's he acting for? In this empty garden? Or is this just an excuse to touch me? I forced my hand away from his, but then he had the audacity to whisper in my ear. Shush, Grandma's watching us from upstairs. Ugh, what a creep. Meanwhile, Rowan said she wanted to please Grandma, but actually, she wasn't even a little bit cooperative. At lunch, while I had to squeeze out a smile as made a spoon-fed me soup, Rowan was being distant toward Paul, her boyfriend. Paul, my sister also likes being fed. Right, that's her favorite dish. Paul got the point right away, so he scooped up some soup and gave it to Rowan as Grandma watched expectantly. But for some reason, my sister seemed irritated, shoved his hand away, and said she's allergic to it, which was some total nonsense. Grandma was obviously discontent hearing that, then stood up to leave the table first. What's the matter with you, Rowan? You didn't have to look so annoyed in front of Grandma. Why can't you just work with Paul? That's how Rowan's always been. She's shy and couldn't open up easily to strange guys as you can. Uh, what did she mean by that? Before I could reply, Dad came to my defense. How can you say that? Isn't Orla trying her best to play her part and not make Grandma suspect a thing? Oh, so you two are doing great, and we're just ruining everything? There they go again. Usually Rowan and I would just stand there and watch, because only our Grandma can stop their fights. And this time was no exception. 
As soon as they saw Grandma, my parents immediately turned around and held each other's hands. Nita was just as quick when he grabbed my arm as well as Grandma's, and then invited us for a walk. Hey, who are you? Why are you being so friendly to us? Oh dear, it was only a few seconds ago and her memory of him had already vanished. I immediately said Maida and I went to the same college and he was visiting me. <sighs> I thought that was it, but no. Speaking of college, she immediately asked why we were home when we should be at school. The whole family froze at her reaction. My parents carefully mentioned the wedding to see if she remembered anything, but she snapped. How can you talk about marriage when my two grandchildren are still of school age? Have you two lost your mind? So, the next morning, I had to go to the university with Rowan. But the cherry on top was riding this tiny pink bicycle together per grandma's order. <sighs> this was embarrassing, but how can we refuse? She only recalled the old memories. So I wandered around here all day waiting for Maida and Rowan to finish their classes. Suddenly I spotted Paul with some girls. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, Orla. Uh, I... I'm just giving directions to these freshmen. Actually, I'm waiting to pick up your sister. Wow, Paul seems to have a real crush on Rowan. I have to help my timid as a hair sister seize the opportunity. I took Paul to the lecture hall just as class was wrapping up, then pushed Rowan towards him, wished them a happy outing, and quickly pulled Maida away to give the couple some space. Finally, I could go home. But just as we reached the college gate, we saw dad helping grandma come this way. Seeing my face turn pale, dad immediately explained that grandma thought today was my first day of college, so she insisted on coming to pick us up. Jeez, it was bad enough coming here on a tiny pink bike. I drew the line at my dad and grandma picking me up. I wasn't a preschooler. Uh, I was assigned to tidy the football field. It's my turn on duty today. Don't wait for me. Oh, is that so? Take your time. I'll look around for a while. I looked at Maida, hoping he had some idea to get me out of this, but he just grinned and took the broom from me. Come on, let's clean up this place. I was only gonna fake cleaning a bit, but turns out Grandma's the most meticulous supervisor ever. Orla, there's some trash over there. Look closely, honey, there are dry leaves in the corner. Then, you have to wipe these stains with a wet cloth. As soon as she went away, I lay on the field, panting with exhaustion. Aren't you tired? Oh man, I'm already drained out. Can't imagine how bad it's gonna get for me at grandma's age. Poor her. It's scary how one day we might forget our family. Birth, aging, sickness, death, these are things we can't change. Orla, but one thing we could do is cherishing every moment with our loved ones as these times are special. I was so wrong when, initially, I considered Maida as an impolite, annoying person. His deep thoughts made me feel comfortable enough to pour my heart out about my family. Why my parents divorced, why I didn't visit Grandma as much as I should have, and all the fights with my sister Rowan. We talked loads, and it felt like we've known each other forever. That night, I kept tossing and turning, and couldn't stop thinking about how Maida diligently helped me clean up, about our conversation in the afternoon, and the way he helped me stand up. Oh, what's wrong with me? It's undeniable that this side of him is so attractive. But there's one problem. When we were leaving, he said to me, See you tomorrow, Rowan. Yes, Rowan. How could he? Was it because all these acts in front of my grandma got him mixed up? Or is it because she's always on his mind? <sighs> Never mind. It's none of my business. The next day, I was sick of strolling around the campus, so I went to class with Rowan and Maida. Rowan's right. They seemed really close. During the lesson, both of them listened attentively to the lecturer, then turned to discuss with each other. Maida also patiently explained the part Rowan didn't understand to her. Hey, what are we gonna have for lunch? What's good in the canteen? You will take this course next year too, so focus. And then they got back to their discussion, as if I was invisible. Ugh, how frustrating. Hey, are you jealous? <laughs> Don't be, we're just friends. Why did she say that? Jealous? That's absurd. Still sulking? How about we go to the cinema tonight? I'll help you two. And here we are. As planned, I would sit next to Maida while Rowan would be with Paul. Sounds good. But when Rowan was about to settle next to Paul, Maida immediately took that seat. So he didn't want to sit next to me, 
Well, he didn't want Rowan to be with Paul? Either way, he obviously didn't have feelings for me. <sighs> as soon as the movie ended, I rushed out of there, just to catch some familiar sight of... Grandma and Dad again! She started nagging and insisted on escorting me home. Why are you still out here at this hour, Rowan? There was a lot to prepare for the wedding. Now the wedding's back on? Oh dear, you two. A groom-to-be shouldn't be playing around like this. Paul? Why don't you pair me with Maida like before, Grandma? After all, we were back to our former partners. I'm with Paul and Maida with Rowan. Well, it's just a fake wedding, so it doesn't matter who I was marrying to, right? But what was this uneasy feeling? And then, it's like Grandma had telepathy to hear my wish. Right before the ceremony started, her memory suddenly reset. What are you doing sitting here? It's time! Get up there! She dragged Maida to the altar and told the best man Paul to step aside. Oh, how cute. <laughs> and everything after that was like a dream. I walked down the aisle, Maida gently looked at me and sincerely made the vow. His acting was flawless, while I was buzzing with nerves. Sensing this, he gently held my hands to calm me down. I... I... do. The crowd burst into applause, and among them, I spotted Grandma's joyful face. Despite the exciting moment, I didn't let myself forget another important mission, which was helping my big sister to get a boyfriend. So I threw the bouquet to Rowan and winked at Paul. But weirdly, she didn't seem happy about this. That evening, after all the guests left, I went to look for Maida. To be honest, I really wanted to know if he felt the same as me. Here he was, but why did he look so agitated? I was about to call him, when out of the blue he bolted to punch. Paul! Repeatedly! You jerk, stay away from Rowan, got it? What's going on? They're fighting because of Rowan? So Maida really was pretending at the ceremony. He liked Rowan, not me. Didn't you say you're just friends with Maida? What's all this? Friends don't get jealous when someone else is flirting with you. Orla, it's not what you think. Knew it. She thought she could fool me again. I turned around and was about to chase after Paul to check on him, but someone's hand grabbed mine. It was Maida. Paul is not as kind as you think he is. Turned out, the reason why Rowan was awkward around Paul was because he always tried to touch her. Not to mention girls on social media were calling him out for taking advantage of them and cheating on them. Both Maida and Rowan knew it all, but they tried to put up with it through the wedding. However, he kept crossing the line. So today, Maida decided to teach him a lesson. So how I acted at the movies that day and just now was to protect my friend, not because I'm jealous. I didn't know he did so much for my family. Orla, how come you're here? Isn't it still the school year? And also, your parents are so weird. When did they make up with each other? Oh, she called me by my name. She even questioned who Maida was. Her memory seems to be perfectly back. Thinking our grandma had recovered, Rowan quickly called her parents. We were over the moon thinking a miracle had happened. But then, the doctor crushed our newfound joy, saying it was a phenomenon called terminal lucidity meaning our grandma didn't have much time left. None of us wanted to believe it, but there was nothing else we could do but make the most out of the precious little time we had left with her. I also decided to put college on hold to live with grandma during her last days. Each morning, we would go for a walk together as I listened to her stories of the old days and then share with her some of my fondest memories. Mom and dad still bicker and then make up. Some things never change, <laughs> but Rowan and I are getting along much better. Turns out we have more in common than we realized. And Maida, he still comes over to visit Grandma. Then one day, Maida was saying goodbye to me when Grandma suddenly shouted out loud, Where do you think you're going? Still got loads to prepare. You think the wedding is a joke or something? Wedding again? We froze and looked at each other till Grandma yelled at us a second time. But this round, maybe Maida and I wouldn't need to act anymore because when I asked him if he was ready to take a vow again, he replied, Of course, Orla. I'm always ready to say those words to you every day. Let me tell you something. Something really important. I have acrophobia, so this is my idea of a nightmare. I don't want to be here at all. Oh, and that guy on the other side is Charlie. He's my boyfriend, but I don't actually like him like that. So 
You're probably wondering how I ended up here, 200 meters above the ground and about to make this terrifying leap? Well, let's just start from the beginning. Hi, I'm Luna, a 17-year-old high school girl from a small town in New South Wales. Growing up, I was desperate to please my hard-working single mom. The problem was she was nearly always tired and irritable, so no matter what I said or did, it usually ended up being wrong. The most common words that came out of her mouth were, if you want me to love you, you have to be nice. I wanted her to love me more than anything else in the world, so I did everything I could to appease her. This led to the need to make everyone happy, and left me with an unfathomable fear of being hated by others. If I made other people happy, then they'd like me, right? So whenever someone asked me to do their homework or cover for them on roll call, I did so without hesitation. And if there's ever an argument or awkward situation, regardless of if I'm to blame or not, I always apologize first. At 15, I moved to Sydney alone for high school, and that's when I met my roommate Margot. She's my complete opposite, but this didn't stop us from becoming best friends. She is independent, sassy, and doesn't let anyone pressure her into doing anything she doesn't want to. Guys, if I were more like her, I would have been able to avoid a lot of trouble. Once we had a group assignment in biology, and I by chance teamed up with these two popular girls, the day before the deadline, they both texted me saying they were sick and asked me to do their parts. This was a lot of work for one person, but I didn't want to upset them, so I agreed. But then that night, while I was scrolling through Instagram during my brief break after hours of studying, I saw them checking in at a party. What? So they lied to me so they could go out and have fun and left me home alone to do their homework? Oh my, I just want to take this pen and throw it right at their dumb duck faces. How was that cute in any way? Ugh, but who was I kidding? I knew full well I'd never be able to tell them what I really thought of them. So I picked up the pen and continued my workload meant for three people alone. I stayed up all night and drank three cans of energy drinks, but it was just too much work for one person to finish on time. Our assignment, or should I say my assignment, got points deducted due to late submission, which somehow made the popular girls mad. What have you done? How could you turn in the assignment late? Um, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just that doing it all by myself was a bit too much for me. Oh, please. You had the whole day to finish it. It's all down to your poor time management. Right at that moment, Margot appeared out of nowhere and stepped between us. Pfft. If you both cared so much about your grades, then you would have helped Luna complete it. Instead of going to some stupid party, how about I report you to the teacher to cross out your names from Margot? Enough. Sorry, don't mind her. Then I quickly pulled Margot away. Apologizing to them was a ridiculous thing to do. It wasn't your fault. I, I know it's not my fault, but, but there's no point making a scene out of it, right? Fine. In that case, I'll leave you alone with all the troubles you've caused yourself. I don't care anymore. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean to make Margot mad. I quickly apologized to her, told her she was my best friend in the whole world, and asked her to go for a milkshake to make up. A week later, on the day my volunteer club was selling lemonade to raise funds for a children's charity, I suddenly fell sick. Oh no, I had been telling everyone at the club how important this event was, but now I was the one who'd be absent. How embarrassing! I needed to show them how sincere I was. I texted the club president that I was sick, but if the club really needed me, I could still try to participate. <sighs> now I can finally sleep. But who would know? Before I even had time to curl up in bed, he texted back saying how they really needed my help. So if I could come, that'd be great. Oh no, did I really have to drag my feverish self over there? Not knowing what to do, I turned to Margot for advice, but she snapped at me. If you knew you couldn't go, why suggest otherwise? People will always take advantage of you if you let them. So just make it clear that you're sick and can't participate. Then she told me how her music club had a dinner meeting tonight, yet she'd already decided she was having a relaxing pamper session tonight, so she immediately told them she was otherwise engaged. Ugh. Margot was right. If I'd done as she said in the first place, I wouldn't have had to rack my brains looking for excuses to say no without annoying anyone. Finally, I texted the club president that I was afraid of infecting everyone so I'd better stay home. Then I fell asleep and found my worries plaguing my dreams. The next day, I felt better. So after class, I dropped by the club's room, but I instantly felt weird vibes from everyone. Then when I asked the club president how much money we'd earned from the event, he totally blanked me. 
Oh, no. He was obviously still mad with me for letting him down. I was lost in thoughts when suddenly someone tapped me on the shoulder. I heard you were sick. Are you feeling better now? It was Charlie, one of the club members. He told me that day I was off sick. He voluntarily took over all of my work. So I invited him out for a thank you dinner right away. Hmm. Maybe he misunderstood my goodwill jester, as after that he bombarded me with texts, calls, and soppy memes. Then one day while we were walking together, Charlie suddenly stopped and took my hand. Luna, we've known each other for a while now. I think it's time for me to confess my feelings. I, I like you. Will you go out with me? Oh my. What did he just say? I stood there dumbfounded. I mean, I liked him as a friend, but not romantically. But when I met his expectant gaze, my conscience began to torment me. He was such a nice guy, so how could I say no to him? In the end, I, I forced a smile and nodded in agreement. My feelings for him will develop over time, right? But unfortunately, the answer to this was no. <laughs> Actually, since we started dating, I found myself liking him even less than before. He does a lot of things that irritate me, such as the time he insisted we wear couple outfits to school. Yeah, slogan shirts with he's mine, she's mine printed on them should definitely be left in 2010. Ugh. He smugly ushered me around the school and seemed oblivious to the laughs and points in our direction. If only the ground could just open up and swallow me right away. That evening, noticing how fed up I looked, Marco asked me if everything was going all right between me and Charlie. So I told her everything. I thought she'd get mad at me again, but to my surprise, she just sighed and told me to tell the truth and break up with Charlie before things got too serious. That's the best way to stop both of us from getting hurt. And also, I've heard a lot of bad things about Charlie. People say he's kinda erratic. You better get this over with as soon as possible. Yeah, Margot's right. Next time I saw Charlie, I was ending this once and for all. Turns out I didn't have to wait long, because that Sunday afternoon, Charlie came to pick me up for our date. He told me he had a surprise in store for me, and I was gonna love it. Okay, it sounds like he'd gone to loads of effort, so it was probably best if I left breaking up with him until the journey home. Almost there! Hearing what Charlie said, I looked out the window and- Oh my god! Is that a bungee jumping spot? So, long story short, here I am, 200 meters off the ground, my legs trembling like a leaf and my heart thudding like crazy. I was about to cry out of fear when suddenly, I heard romantic music playing behind me. I turned around to see Charlie getting down on one knee. Behind him was eagle-eyed staff, holding roses and candles while swaying to the music. Um, what's happening? I know we haven't been dating long, but it's clear that we're made for each other. Luna, will you marry me? What? Did I hear him wrong? I mean, I'm only 17. Seeing my puzzled look, Charlie hurriedly said, I know we're still in high school, but don't worry, we can wait till graduation. Then let's have the most wonderful wedding straight after that. This was insane. I stood there, rooted to the floor, not knowing what to do, and seeing everyone watching and waiting made me feel even more pressured. I was trying to figure all this out when Charlie forced the ring on my finger. Oh my god. What should I do? What should I do? Well, in classic me fashion, I didn't do anything. My stupid hand just froze in place, and in the end, it turned out like this. No, no, I, I couldn't let this happen. Charlie, actually, I... I, um, I don't have feelings for you. I, I was going to tell you today, but I, I didn't expect things to end up like this. You're kidding me, right? If you didn't like me, you wouldn't have let me put the ring on earlier. So I explained everything to Charlie. His face darkened with disappointment. I felt so guilty. I should have just been straight with him from the beginning. Then none of this would have happened. We can still be friends, can't we? I asked, but Charlie replied without even looking at me. If you don't like me then why give me hope? Why the emotionless tone? It felt like he'd turned into a completely different person. Af afraid, I, I kept quiet, not daring to blurt out so much as a word. I'd be home soon and away from this suffocating atmosphere. But as Charlie drove, I noticed how the surroundings became stranger and stranger. This is definitely not the way to the dormitory. Finally, the car stopped at an abandoned construction site. Luna, get out of the car. Sensing his irritable tone, I did as he said. You can stay here until you've figured out that we're destined for each other. Then call me. I watched in horror as he drove away and left me there. I was all alone, in the middle of nowhere. Panicked, I called Margot for help, but as soon as she picked up, my phone ran out of power. 
I explored the area, but it was completely deserted. Would I be stuck here forever without anyone knowing? It was getting late. I'd barely eaten or drank anything all day, and this felt hopeless. I burst into tears, and then everything fell dark around me. I woke up to the bright lights of the hospital. Margot jumped in to give me a hug, then explained what had happened. Turns out that night after I called her, she checked my location on Snapchat and saw that I was in some deserted place. Sensing something was off, Margot and the dormitory manager went to find me and took me to the hospital. Charlie was disciplined and detained for a month for the trouble he'd caused. After that horrible experience, I talked a lot with Margot. She comforted me, encouraged me, and said that it seemed like my desire to please others stemmed from childhood trauma. Perhaps it was my mother's words. If you want me to love you, you have to be nice. That created the character I have now. I couldn't continue to let the past consume me. That summer, when I returned home to see my mom, together, we poured out our feelings and faced our problems. I finally figured out that being nice to people wasn't a bad thing, but agreeing to things just to avoid disappointing people isn't the correct thing to do at all. Now, with Margot's help, I'm step by step learning to say no to things I don't want to do, because life's way too short to say yes to everything, don't you think? Look at this gorgeous golden cruise. Isn't it perfect for my 16th birthday? <laughs> Here comes the most exciting part of tonight. Gifts, of course. All the guests lined up eager to hand me their presents. Mr. Robinson bought me this eau de parfum in a dainty gold bottle. Yep, approved. What's next? Ooh, a pair of Jimmy shoes from the Mitchells? Gold, of course. Nice color, but the heels are far too low. What a bummer. I'll have to pass on this. That's right. Every single thing of mine needs to follow specific standards. Why, you ask? Well, my mom saw me as her beautiful angel deserving wonderful golden luxury since the day I was born with his silky blonde hair and sparkling amber eyes. So much that she immediately changed my nursery interior to gold along with all my baby clothes and toys to match my features. Throughout my childhood, mom continued to spoil me with life's wonderful golden luxuries. One time, I asked for a piano, then voila! A grand classical one made from pure gold appeared. Can you believe that? Another time, I said I wanted a pony. Then, without hesitation, she took me to a farm to meet Goldie, my new mare with the shiniest golden coat. Mom, thank you so much. Honey, gold is the symbol of power and divinity. You must always remember how special you are and never accept anything less than perfection. And those are the words I've been living up to. Back to my birthday party. It's time for birthday cake. But the flowers are pink. I want it all gold. Ship friends, please crib them all out and replace them with gold ones. I couldn't believe my birthday was almost ruined because of that. Mom patted me on the shoulder to comfort me, while Dad just gave a disapproving look. It's just a cake, Lola. How are you going to fit in out there if you insist on being so picky? Maybe you should join a public school to open up your eyes a little. School? Hmm, that's not a bad idea. Always being homeschooled meant I didn't have any friends. Even the guests today are all my parents' business partners. But Mom opposed the idea immediately as she didn't want me to go through any hardships. Don't worry, Mom. I'll choose a school that fits all my standards. Pretty please. And of course, she couldn't say no. <laughs> so, here I am, negotiating straight up with the principal. I suppose painting your luck of gold and bringing a personal <clears throat> chef to school and such are doable. But I'm afraid we don't have a private piano room. Then build one. Also, we only have outdoor sports field and swimming pool. So, just install a roof? Don't expect me to play sports in the scorching heat. Miss, unlike your previous tutor, not all the teachers here have a doctorate degree, be bilingual, and in the early to mid-thirties. <sighs> in that case, no biggie. I'll just find another school then. No, wait. Give me time. As long as your family sponsors the school as promised, I will definitely make it happen. Ha! <laughs> there you go. Finally, it's my first day of school. Immediately, all the students already swarmed around me in all of my noble vibes and fashion sense. No surprises, as this school needs a serious makeover. But wait, that 
blonde girl looks pretty neat. Ooh, she even carried a yellow Chanel classic flat bag. What a coincidence. Mine's a limited edition. I went to talk to her right away. Her name's Beth, and we just naturally clicked after a brief chat about fashion and cosmetics. Seemed like I found myself an amazing bestie. Every day after class, I took Beth on shopping sprees at Saks for bonding. I got her all the clothes and accessories in gold and yellow, just like mine. I even talked her into bleaching her hair to be bright as mine. We're basically twins now. There's just one problem. Wherever we went, the boys followed. If you go out with me, I'll give you the latest Gucci collection. Sorry, I just bought the whole store. I can pick the stars for you if you want. Is that so? And what should I do with those useless rocks? My dad just bought me a Ferrari. I can take you anywhere. Good for you. Too bad my Rolls Royce is there. Bye! Why do they have to make such a scene? There's no way I'd fall for those idiots. I want my Prince Charming who meets all my golden standards. Hmm, how about just letting everyone know my ideal type? Then I can suss out the pyrite from the real deal boyfriend material. With no time to waste, I created an ask me a question story on IG and asked Beth to cooperate. <laughs> now all I have to do is to list my requirements. The next morning at school, all of the dorks finally left me alone. Oh, except for this guy. Hey Sugar Plum, I can be the man of your dreams. So, this is Josh, captain of the soccer team. Also the hottest boy here. It seemed he met all of my standards. Is he my perfect missing piece? I was dead wrong. During our date, he blabbed on non-stop about how terrible it was for him for being too rich and too handsome. Ugh, how I longed to shove the steak right into his mouth and go home. But I suppose he did meet my high standards, so maybe I should give him another chance. <sighs> The next morning, during PE class, Beth dashed toward me, holding a super duper stinky shoe. Lola, Josh lied to you. He's not 6'4". Look at this nasty hiding crease insole. He's only 6'3". Ew, gross. Babe, I I'm sorry. I only did it because- That's enough. Take this stinky shoe away from me. We are over. And so my quest to find true love is at a dead end. Again. Yet, surprisingly, luck had smelled on me once more. Later that day, I came to the practice room as usual when my favorite piece of music reached my ears. Oh my, what a heavenly sight. All of a sudden, I felt my heart skip a beat as I unconsciously walked toward that boy. Seems like someone has a really good taste in music. And your skills? Not so bad either. Well... As long as you open your heart to feel its soul, not just learn the notes. Then he stood up and walked away, not bothering to look back at me once. That was a bit snobby, wasn't it? Yet strangely, I stood there dazed. But wait, who am I to swoon that easily? Let's see if he met my standards first. Beth helped me to find out more about him. Turns out he's Connor, the new transfer student who's trying out for the basketball team. So, I immediately went to Ken, the captain, and whispered in his ear, asking him to come up with an excuse to make Connor get a physical exam. At my personal doctor's office, of course. The result is finally in. Natural, blonde, no baldness, check. 6'5", definitely without hide and crease insoles, check. White teeth, no cavities, check. Wow, he ticks all the boxes. Then I rushed to the principal's office, asking him for Connor's school report, and... It was impressive. He's always in the school's top two, actively takes part in extracurricular activities, and he even won a prize in the national basketball competition. Oh my god, he's perfect. But wait, there's one condition left. This should be easy. <laughs> Just a little higher. Higher? Ha! There they are. But these girls were way too obsessed over his abs. Those are mine, okay? That's right. There's no doubt that Connor is my Mr. Right. After that, I shyly handed him a bottle of golden labeled mineral water and asked if he'd like to practice playing piano with me. My heart was thudding like crazy, but he just muttered, Sorry, but I already have a date. Then he went past me to... Lily! What? 
That nerdy girl with zero social skills? There's no way I can lose to her. I immediately told the principal to switch all my classes to Connor so I could easily approach him. My amazing advisor Beth also helped me devise a super detailed step-by-step -step strategy. Soon, Connor will get over boring Lily and fall head over heels for me. First step, scent attraction. Beth told me that Connor loves the snow brand perfume, so I sprayed a bunch of it on and confidently walked into class. But why do people keep sneezing so much? Even Connor was also frowning and holding his nose. Hey Lola, you didn't shower this morning, did you? Spraying a whole bottle of cheap perfume won't help. And the whole class burst into laughter. Ugh, how humiliating. Okay, plan B. Beth suggested a grand confession. Great idea. So when school ended, the cheerleaders and I started a formation right in the middle of the entrance to ask Connor out. But before he could react, a girl suddenly lost her balance and dragged everyone down on top of me. Ouch! This time was sure to move him to tears. But when I was cheering for him, Connor somehow missed his shot and the ball flew straight at me, causing me to tumble face first into the armpit of this smelly guy. Yuck! Why did everything keep going wrong? <sighs> Suddenly, I bumped into Josh. He grabbed my hand and started begging me to take him back. He said he tried all kinds of ways to grow taller and actually managed to reach 6'4 now. So I should stop pursuing Connor and become his princess instead. Jeez, I'm really not in the mood for this desperado. Let go of me! I then ran into Beth while leaving. She came to tell me that she figured out another way to make Connor mine. It seems like he's really into Lily. We have to separate them. So, I called Lily to a corner and told her as long as she stayed away from Connor, I would buy her whatever she wanted. You know, not everything can be bought. Connor isn't interested in you, so you'd better give up. You're just annoying him. What? I didn't expect quiet, nerdy Lily to say that to someone as lustrous as me. Lily's words had been bothering me all day. Was I wrong to continue pursuing Connor? Suddenly, someone ran past the window and splashed an entire bucket of paint onto Lily. I sat there baffled at what had just unfolded, when Connor immediately took his jacket off and covered Lily up. You're behind this, aren't you? You've really crossed the line. Stay away from us. Wait, he thought I did that? It's true I didn't like Lily, but I just wanted her to stay away from him. I never wanted her to be covered in ghastly purple paint. But the worst was yet to come, as the next day, Connor arrived at school with pitch black hair. Your, your beautiful hair, what, why did you ruin it? But Connor just tutted at me and tried to pull Lily away. You know, there's so much more to Connor than his hair color. Do you even like him for him or just because he happened to meet all of your absurd standards? If you're really into him, why not change your standards for him? I was speechless. Lily was right. I really thought all those standards were enough to make up an amazing boyfriend. Then I realized how Josh had what it takes. Still, I didn't want him. I only wanted Connor. Let's go, Lily. Someone this naive and spoiled will never understand what true love is. Leave her to her scheming. Wait, why do you keep insisting that I'm the one who harmed Lily? Drop the act. I know that paint stunt was just one of your many dirty tricks. Beth's already sent me the video where you failed to bribe Lily. Huh? Beth? Why did she do that? I was still clueless when suddenly the principal called Beth to his office. I rushed there to find out the culprit splashing paint on Lily was caught, and he revealed that the mastermind was Beth. At first, she tried to deny it, but when the boys showed us their texts about the deal, she had to tell the truth. You, you stole everything from me. Before you came here, I was the it girl, but now people only see me as your replica. Why are you so obsessed with that hideous golden color and your stupid standards? I can't believe Josh actually likes you while well, I was the one by his side when you dumped him. Huh? So Beth liked Josh all this time? She even accepted to date him in secret. But turned out Josh only treated her as a side piece while he tried to win me back. If I can't have Josh, you can never have Connor. Unbelievable! So all this time, I'd let a fox guard the geese. I couldn't bear this place any longer, so I skipped class and went straight home. That night, on seeing how upset I was, Dad came to comfort me. 
I cried and told him all about my love life and friendship troubles. Honey, maybe it's time you saw others differently. Those standards don't mean anything. You should open your heart and allow yourself to see the good in people. Dad was right. I was so dead set on them that I couldn't see the true nature of the people around me. I chose Beth and Josh based on those standards, but both of them let me down. Meanwhile, Connor deliberately broke them, yet I couldn't shake him from my mind. The standards were like my music sheets. I played each note correctly, but I was so caught up in the practical side of it that I'd forgotten to embrace the soul. So the next morning, I went to apologize to Connor for the troubles I caused him and Lily. I just want you to know, I really like you, no matter what color your hair is. But may I ask you one question? What is it about Lily that you like so much? What? You think I'm dating Lily? <laughs> She's my cousin. Uh-oh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> but wait, in that case, does that mean I still have a chance? Do you remember when you were 10, you participated in a children's piano contest? A gold necklace was stolen from the hotel you were staying at. Yeah, I just have a vague recollection about that incident. The suspect was a blonde boy, a female employee's son, but I noticed the necklace peeking through a man's pocket instead. Leave the boy alone! This man is the thief! So that kid was Connor? He was grateful and super impressed with the innocent and righteous girl back then that he recognized me right away the day we met again. However, when he saw how cocky I was, he thought I'd change for the worse and ignored me. Now I see, the admirable girl I know is still there after all this time. So I wouldn't mind if we start getting to know each other anew. Really? Wish me luck this time, you guys. <laughs> I dashed along the hallway, then skidded to a halt in front of the classroom door. Ah, uh, I was late. Again. Miss Anderson, what's your excuse today? Morning, sir. I'm sorry, but my spaniel hit my shoes, then I tripped over a package by my front door, then my heap of a junk car wouldn't start, and that's enough. Good God. Please sit down. Ashley already took attendance. What? So much for my perfectly crafted excuse. Mr. O'Shaughnessy totally would have let it slide, but she had to ruin it. I'm Ashley. I'm pretty. I'm perfect. Everybody likes me. Well, no one likes teacher's pets, Ashley. Think I'm being too harsh on her? <laughs> Just ask anyone about Ashley Mae Anderson. Ashley's father's a vet with a Medal of Valor. They even had dinner with the president at the White House. For her sweet 16, she rented out the swankiest club downtown for an entire weekend. And David Guetta DJ'd. Ashley dated two college boys at the same time, and when they found out, things got physical. Okay, okay, maybe not all of that was true, but who cares? Look, the main character here is me. Hi, my name's Ashley Mae Anderson. I know, what a freaky coincidence, right? But that's the only thing we had in common. Because unlike popular Ashley, I'm just a normal teen who's just minding her own business. But then she transferred here and messed up everything. This happens every time I open my locker. And they're not addressed to me, but to Ashley. Jeez, why do boys go so cuckoo bananas over that pretentious princess? I gathered that whole cluster and dumped them on Ashley's desk. Here's your delivery for the day. Oh, I have no use for those things. You can keep them if you want. How snobby. I know those rumors weren't all lies. Alright, if you said so. Being mistaken for Ashley was so annoying that I did consider putting a sign on my locker or something. But I suppose sometimes it actually had its perks. Like when I accidentally knocked over a trash can in the school's parking lot. But upon knowing my name, the janitor said my father was his commanding officer back in the day and let me off. And believe it or not, these mix-ups didn't only happen at school. Once, my family went out for dinner and the staff at this restaurant thought we were the other Andersons. They must be some really important people cause the super attentive waiters topped up our drinks for free and gave us complimentary desserts. Pretty sweet, right? Only when we were leaving, things almost went south when the manager shook my dad's hand and said, Thank you for your service. My dad seemed confused, but fortunately I dragged him away before they busted us. 
I mean, Ashley's been enjoying these privileges her entire life, so it's fair I benefit a little from them. Especially since I have to endure being called her Walmart version. Anyway, back to me. I arrived home to find a teary-eyed girl sitting on her front porch. She must be one of Billy's exes. If your brother's a jock that all girls flock around, you'd get used to this real soon. He went through girlfriends quicker than hair gel, and he always had some peeves about them, like Mandy, too clingy, Katie, too dramatic, Maggie, too flirty. The list goes on. Then, as soon as my backpack hit the bedroom floor, my door burst open. Hey, I need your help. What? Need a hand to make up with cry Barbie out there? She's ancient history. Check this out. Her name's Jane Brown. Ain't she a beaut? I immediately recognized her. She's the waitress that he kept eyeing the other day. Now, he needed my help to ask her out and not seem creepy. So, I suggested taking her to his friend Alexander's party this weekend. How do you know about that? Isn't that cool people exclusive? As if I wanted to. I was added to their group chat by accident because they thought I was Ashley. <laughs> right. Hot Ashley. You should come too. I'll be with Jane, but Victor will be there. Wait, I'll see my crush at that stupid party? Sign me up then! Jocks, cheerleaders, stuck-up kids. This place was packed with people like Billy. My brother briefly introduced me to the host Alexander, while Madison followed him around looking all shy and gooey-eyed. Wasn't she bothered that all Alexander seemed to care about was if anyone had seen Ashley? I also got to officially meet Jane, but the person I was looking for was Victor. He's so much more than just a cute face in the crowd. He's the peanut butter to my jelly. But before I could talk to him, a bunch of dudes popped out of nowhere. This is Ashley? Oh man, I thought she was supposed to be pretty. No offense though. She's a six if you squint hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm squinting now and you're barely even a to yourself. No offense though. What, what did, did you, you say? say? <laughs> Don't worry, you can still go after pretty girls. They just need a crate of fear first. The crowd suddenly felt silent and stared at us. This party is so lame. Peace out, losers. Anywhere is better than that stuffy elitist hellhole, but it's a bummer I didn't get to talk to Victor. He's Billy's best bro and used to come hang out at our place pretty much every day, but not anymore. Guess has been avoiding me ever since I told him I had feelings for him. <sighs> I was going to settle things with him tonight, but those jerks ruined it. Do I need to print my own t-shirt saying, I'm Ashley, you must be looking for Ashley? The next day, while looking for Victor, I heard someone calling my name. But I turned around only to see Alexander calling for, ugh, Ashley. So annoying. I saw him make a move on her, but she said guys like him bored her, then proceeded to list all his flaws. Oof, harsh. From then on, I tried my best to avoid Ashley, and thought my life would be light and breezy. But nope. On the contrary, I found myself in a series of unfortunate events. One day, a stack of religious magazines randomly showed up on our doorstep. But the real kicker was, they were all addressed specifically to me! And there was absolutely no way to convince my family and neighbors that I wasn't a member of the Church of Scientology. Two days later, all of my clean clothes had some weird stains and holes on them. I had to beg Billy to lend me some of his. That day, I went to school in an old jersey, looking like a midget. <sighs> Then, this Monday, I became the center of attention by showing up with my face covered in pimple patches and band-aids. Well, that's because I woke up to countless cystic acne and didn't have enough patches. This resulted in me being called the mummy for five days straight. But the final straw was my car having two flat tires. The clock was ticking, so I asked Billy to take me to school. However, he just flat out refused, saying he'd already promised to pick Jane up. No other choice, I had to ride my old bike. When I saw Billy's car in the driveway, my pettiness got the better of me, so I splashed my half-empty milk carton over the windshield. I'm on my way. Oh my god, you little brat! Sorry babe, you won't believe what my sister just did. Seeing Billy's reaction was chef's kiss. <laughs> you got it coming, big bro. The next day, my car was fixed, so I managed to get to school early. Looks like my string of bad luck was finally over. Okay, let's see who wants to confess to Queen Ashley today. From Victor?
Oh no, why him? I stood there, frozen with a letter in my hand, still processing the situation when a friend came and showed me something on her phone. It's a video of me singing and dancing in my room! No one's supposed to see this, ever! It had been uploaded by some throwaway account, but who else could it be but... Jesus Christ! Billy! I rushed home to see Billy and Jane cuddling in the living room. How's he still so calm after pulling that on me? I confronted him, and he didn't even bother denying it, and even said that's what I deserved for vandalizing his car. We screamed and shouted at each other, but before we ended up in a fistfight, he stopped and stumped off to his room. I was still fuming, glaring at his shadow, and I saw Jane gawping at me in delight. Don't blame your poor brother too much, dear. It was I who pulled the strings. What? Jane? But why? We'd barely even interacted. Then she went on about all of my mishaps lately were her doings. Yep, my so-called bad luck, it had been Jane all along. That's for stealing Alexander from my sister. He's her first love. Do you know how heartbroken Zoe has been? Wait, Zoe who? And why on earth would I choose to mingle with that playboy Alex? Kudos to this girl for thinking I could ever steal someone's boyfriend. Hello, I'm still struggling with my lifelong crush over here. I tried to tell her she made a mistake, but she wouldn't listen. Stop denying it. I know it's you. You're East High's Ashley with a vet dad. That checked all the boxes already. Hold up. There's another Ashley Mae Anderson in our school. She's Ashley with EY. I'm Ashley, E-I-G-H. Her dad is a war veteran. My father is a veterinarian. Oh, snap. Good lord. She devised this intricate plan, approached Billy just to make it work, and was successful for the most part. Well, apart from having the wrong person. Just amazing. Jane apologized and promised to take down the video. However, she wanted me to help her take revenge on Ashley in return. I didn't want to get involved, but I also never wanted to be on her bad side again, so I reluctantly agreed. But if you think about it, Jane's story didn't quite add up. Ashley seemed to have a holier-than-thou attitude and had dozens of admirers waiting in line. Why would she get in between them? Not to mention, Alexander's a notorious player who Ashley already ruthlessly rejected. I believe there's more to this. As expected, thanks to that video, my school life was now even more awkward than usual. But it didn't matter, as I was too preoccupied with Operation Ashley. Today's mission, approach her after cheerleading practice. I stood in the corner behind the bleacher, waiting for my chance. But before I showed myself, I saw Madison march over, say something to Ashley, then storm off. After that, Ashley started sobbing? I didn't know what happened, but I felt bad for her. So I tried comforting her, but she kept brushing me off. Look, you can keep the Ice Queen Act all you want, but I know you have feelings too. I thought you might have something else you want to share with me, not just the name. And it was like I pulled a lever that let out all of her bottled up emotions, and we had a heart to heart all afternoon. Just as I thought, things weren't what they seemed. We'd better talk this through with one another. So I set up a meeting at a cafe in the South Coast Plaza, as they wouldn't dare to cause a scene in public, right? Anyway, Ashley clarified that Alexander and her weren't a thing, while assuring Zoe that she deserved a guy much better than him. But Alex was really sweet to me. He gave me this present on our one month anniversary. Did he say it's his grandmother's? Yeah, he tried giving me an identical one on my birthday. I'd say you dodged a bullet when you two broke up. Please, look at yourself first. You two flirt with boys left and right and still act all high and mighty. Get off that high horse. Ashley seemed genuinely hurt by Jane's words that it took her a while to speak up. I'm just sick and tired of being the popular girl who has to live up to everyone's expectations. It's too exhausting. I thought transferring here would mean a fresh start, but everyone still has this impression of me which I can't seem to change. The rest of us looked at each other in confusion when we saw how sad Ashley's situation actually was. We didn't know there were so many downsides to being high school popular. Ashley, you know you can just be yourself, right? The world will have to accept you for who you truly are. If people don't like you, then so be it. Yeah, if they don't, that's their problem. 
not yours. You can't fit into a mold to please everyone, because there's no such thing. I don't want to agree with her, but she has a point. Let the whole world know the real Ashley. And you too, Zoe. Someday, you'll find a good guy who loves you for yourself. Alright girls, that's settled. Now, I have to deal with my own mess. Billy found out the truth and now he's been ghosting me. But I swear to god, I'm in love with this guy. Gotta go. Bye! I couldn't believe I was rooting for my saboteur and her accomplice to be together. But here I was. Go get him, tiger! The next Monday, Ashley walked to class and had lunch with me instead of Madison and her clique. And of course, this didn't go unnoticed. You left us for her? What is she? You're not hot, sister? <laughs> Before I could clap back, Ashley stood up and unleashed her inner sass. This is me living my life as my true self. If any of you bootlickers have something to say about that, you can shove it where the sun won't shine. Sweet Mary Jesus and Holy Spirits! Who knew she had it in her? Her words completely decimated those hyenas. And suddenly, someone grabbed my wrist. Victor? Slow down! Where are you taking me? Besides, you got the wrong person, and also the wrong address for this. You should give it to her yourself. Actually, I sent it to the right girl, but apparently, she still hasn't opened it. Wait... What? And you're right, I should tell her myself. It's just that Billy and I made a deal that sisters are off limits, so I thought it's better to avoid you. But hearing Ashley talk about being herself made me realize that I'm sick of hiding my feelings. I'm gonna make Billy see how sincere I am for you. Before I do that, Ashley, I like you. And, um, will you go on a date with me? Yes! Um, I mean, yeah, I suppose that would be cool. This is beyond my wildest dream! Not only do I have a brand new friend, but also a date with my dream guy! Fortune is finally smiling on me. <laughs> this school is so boring. All they do is talk nonsense and do nonsense things. Worse still, I feel like I can never escape them, as some of them live in the same neighborhood as me. But you know what the most annoying thing about my life is? That's Joy, my identical twin sister. In my parents' eyes, she's perfect. That's why she's the favorite child. Her allowance is more than mine and she gets to attend an elite private school while I'm stuck at the most boring school ever. How unfair! With a sulky face, I walked into my room whining. I think having identical daughters means our parents forgot that there's actually two of us. They've never picked me up from school. Don't be absurd, they just took me to collect my dress for the school gala. <laughs> a new dress for some fancy party. How terrible for you. I don't even want to go to the party. Trust a nerd like you not to appreciate what you have. If I were you, I'd make the most of every second of that elite school of yours. And if I were you, I would just enjoy my pressure-free life. We both <sighs> sighed and stared into a void thinking about our tiring lives. Then Joy suddenly turned to me. Oh my god, Jade! Do you want to be me? Go to my school, have my things, and attend the gala? What a brilliant idea! Why had we never thought of it before? I'd live her fancy life and she'd live my dull one. That's perfect! Wow, this school is enormous. I tried to keep my cool as I navigated the endless hallways in search of Joy's locker. Ah, found it. I spotted a group of girls waving me over. They must be Joy's besties, Ruth, Nora, and Nell. Unlike my boring sister, they looked very glam in their branded clothes. What a power group. Wherever we went, all eyes were on us. Students handed us snacks, saved places in the cafeteria line for us, and let us sit in the front row of the basketball match. These girls were so interesting. Bet I fit in with them way more than Joy did. Talking about Joy, she somehow loved my boring old-fashioned school. I'd never heard her chat that much in my life about how nice my friends were, how easy all the lessons were, and how cool the school bus was. Joy's friends were so much fun, and they did cool things. For instance, they always had shopping dates and bought each other expensive gifts without question. One time, Nora, the richest girl in the group, didn't hesitate in going into Kate's spade and buying the new release handbag for Ruth. 
I thought this was pretty awesome of Nora, but then something happened that made me question the group dynamics. Ruth told me that she liked the red velvet cupcakes at the bakery near my house, and she asked me to buy her some. I was happy to do it, but the next day, when I brought the cupcakes and told her the price, she burst out laughing. <laughs> Joy, my dear, I don't care how much they cost. That's your concern. Then she turned to Nora, showed her a picture of a cute but expensive skirt, and told her to order it for her. Hang on. Had she always been thinking it was acceptable to order us around like this? I don't understand why an innocent bookworm like my sister would hang around with this cunning clique. They don't study at all. During the test, while I was still randomly circling the answer, Ruth kept on kicking my chair and urging me to let her copy my work. And as soon as the teacher turned her back on us, she even snatched my answer sheet. Huh? What's with that attitude? I took a look around and saw both Nora and Nell were also copying another girl's paper against her will. Rude! After the test, Ruth came up to me, hissing. Have you forgotten our deal? Huh? Deal? What could it be? Well, I guess I would have to put up with Ruth for as long as I was Joy, so I could return everything to her in roughly the same condition after the gala. What I really should do now is just to enjoy this elite school life, right? So, I didn't join Ruth and her minions for lunch, but bought food from this super cool vending machine instead. They even had pizza! But, the machine made these weird sounds. Ugh, I think my food was stuck. So I kicked and tapped it. But it still didn't work! <laughs> you dare get into an altercation with the pizza machine? You must be starving. Oh. My. God, this basketball boy was the most handsome guy I'd ever seen in my life. I was too lost in his eyes to realize the dumb machine had finally delivered my lunch. This gorgeous guy then leaned towards me and my heart skipped. Oh Cupid, I wish I was the one he picked up instead of the pizza. Here you go. Right before I could react, someone snatched the tray and pushed me aside to enter between us. Thanks Hayden, wanna share lunch with me? <laughs> Excuse me? How could she steal both pizza and a boy from me? The boy took my pizza from her and said, Thanks, but I'd like to share this with this cute starving girl instead. I'll buy the drinks. Wait, was he asking me? Then yes, 100% yes! Leaving a furious Ruth behind us, we walked to the bench table nearby. So, he's Hayden, the captain of the basketball team. We talked so much about our favorite comic books and even played basketball for a bit before classes. That was my best lunch ever. After school, I was about to leave when Ruth stopped me. Didn't anyone ever tell you not to mingle with Hayden? He's not wealthy. We have high standards about who deserves to be around us. Duh! Huh? She sure seemed to swoon over him earlier, but now that he'd turned her down, she decided he wasn't worthy? This girl's mindset really didn't sit well with me. As soon as I arrived home, I told Joy everything. You should listen to Ruth. Hayden must be bad news. I don't care what Ruth thinks. How come you do? Is it because of this deal you have with her? <sighs> Not your business, but stay away from Hayden. I don't want to get in trouble. Ugh, this vague hints were agitating me. What was it about? But whatever the deal between Joy and Ruth was, I wasn't going to let it get in the way of my blossoming romance with Hayden. Today, me and Hayden had arranged to meet at lunch again to play basketball. I excitedly walked out of art class just as the girl fell and dropped her painting set around my feet. I immediately picked them up for her, when all of a sudden, a boy's hand covered mine right before someone stamped their feet on our hands. It was Ruth! It was her who tripped up the poor girl too. She did all that on purpose to hurt me, but Hayden got there just in time to save the day. What do you think you're doing? Feeling too embarrassed being caught red-handed, Ruth couldn't do anything but give me a spiteful look before leaving. I couldn't believe that Hayden did that for me. His hand was swollen, but he just kept checking if my hand was okay. How can Ruth be so horrible? Because she knows everyone's ugly secrets, and she uses them to control people. Joy, she knows your secret too, right? No. Uh, um, I'm not sure, but I don't care. No matter what that secret is, she's gone too far. Don't worry, I got your back. So will I. Oh, I'm Katie, by the way. 
From then on, I no longer hung out with Ruth and her minions, but I kept quiet about this to Joy as I didn't want her freaking out and making us switch back places early. The more time I spent with Hayden, the more I found myself liking him. I wanted to confess to him who I really am, but I can't. At least not yet anyway. <sighs> Katie is really nice to me too, and she introduced me to her super sweet friends. Everything was just perfect, except my grades. Well, I didn't dare to tell Joy about this either. My study was pretty bad, and it literally ruined Joy's straight-A record. Meanwhile, Ruth, time after time, insisted that I was the one who had to do all her homework, research, and tests. But, duh, I couldn't even finish mine. You know what I've got. Yeah? What exactly is that you have? What's all the threat about? Ruth was stunned seeing me talking back at her like that. Yep, that was it. I've had enough. After class, she waited at my locker and signaled me to follow her to the equipment room. Finally, I can know what my secret was. Ruth showed me a video on her phone of Joy sneakily checking her notes during an examination. Was she cheating? If our principal sees this, I'm sure your precious scholarship will be long gone. And what about that excellent student title of yours? So Ruth was using this to manipulate Joy. Does she do the same to everyone else? Do you think this would scare me? I don't think. I know. You don't want to lose everything, right? <laughs> no, Ruth. It's you who's gonna lose. Do whatever you want with that clip, like I care. And so, I walked away, leaving a fuming Ruth behind. To be honest, I was a bit scared. Well, I know scores and things like academic transcripts were so important to Joy. What if I destroyed it all? After my last class of the day, the thing that I feared the most came upon me. The principal called me to her office and showed me the video that proved that I cheated on a math exam. She was so disappointed in my horrible grades recently, she even asked if it was because I was too caught up in my dating life and the bad influence I called friends. But how am I supposed to tell her that it was just my own incompetence? Nothing to do with Joy or Hayden or my new friends. I just reached my room door when I heard mom scolding Joy. The principal must have called her. It was all my fault. When mom left the room, I could feel how angry and frustrated mom was. Joy, I'm so sorry. I couldn't let Ruth have this hold over me. Um, I mean you anymore. I waited for Joy to take it out on me. But to my surprise, she was kind of happy. <laughs> That's okay. I think I should thank you for that. I've never been brave enough to stand up for myself, although I was so tired of getting picked on all the time. I was so scared, but turns out being scolded by mom isn't as bad as I thought. <laughs> My homeroom teacher also called me, but she only gave me a warning and told me not to make the same mistake again. I've never felt this at ease before, Jade. I'm not the perfect Joy anymore. Then, Joy told me about the pressure she felt to be perfect. One time, she even got sick before the math test due to studying too much. Not having enough decent revision and being afraid of getting a bad grade, Joy cheated and was caught and recorded by Ruth as evidence. We finally understood each other and decided to teach Ruth a lesson to stop manipulating and taking advantage of others. We spied on Ruth and secretly recorded her. And guess what? Turned out she was not as wealthy as she always pretended to be. All the brand names she had were from the poor victims that she called friends. I also filmed Ruth forcing the top students to do homework and essays for the rich kids while she just sat idly to collect money. I was so ready to post these videos online, but Joy stopped me. She told me if we did this, we were just as bad as Ruth. Instead, she had a better idea. She sent the videos to Ruth and demanded her to delete all of the student's secrets. In exchange, we would delete all of hers. Ruth, of course, had no choice but to obey. Wow, how mature my sister is. My last day in Joy's life has arrived. I'm just gonna make the most of it before I hand the reins back to my sister. Honestly, I kinda miss my normal school and my friends. But what about Hayden? Will he still wanna know me when he finds out I lied to him? I was looking around for Hayden when I saw some mean girls mocking Ruth for wearing a dress cheaper than theirs. So I walked straight up to them and whispered into their ears that I knew all their dirty secrets and they couldn't do anything else but storm off. Ruth gave me a coy look, mumbled a thank you, and then left. At that moment, a warm hand gently clasped mine. Hayden! Wow, you're so cool. I... 
I'm not that cool, Hayden. Actually, I am. I have something I have to tell you. I then told him everything, from how I swapped identities with my twin sister, to how I ruined her school life because of my childishness. You didn't ruin anything. Actually, you made things much better. So, since the pizza vending machine day till now, it has always been you, not Joy, right? Yeah, it's been me all along. <laughs> That's all I needed to know. Then he pulled me in for the best kiss ever. My best friend Tasman is the most popular girl in school. You know the type. Pretty, rich family, the kind of girl who has everything. I guess some would say she's a spoiled brat. I mean, she's pretty nasty to people, and her mood swings are so unpredictable. Plus, she likes to pick on everyone. But luckily for me, we've been friends since we were little, so I knew she'd never treat me as badly as the other kids. But she didn't exactly treat me nicely either. In fact, most of the time, I felt like her maid. But there were good days too, where she was the greatest friend ever, buying me stuff and even taking me to her fancy country club on the weekends. But when she got cranky, oh my god, I bore the brunt of it. She'd yell at me and complain about every little thing I did, and then she'd order me around. I was like her little stress ball or something. One time, she realized her gym clothes were wet, so she made me swap with her, so she could wear my dry ones. It looked like I'd peed my pants, and everyone laughed at me. She didn't even stick up for me. It was like she used me so she could shine even more. Whenever we hung out with boys, she'd drag me along, but didn't let me know beforehand, so I'd show up looking sloppy, and by that way, she'd look amazing next to me. She clearly didn't want me to get any attention. One day I put makeup on and she said I looked like a clown. And then there was the time she wanted to date this guy, but he would only date her if she brought a friend for his brother. So she brought me and oh my god, his brother was such a weirdo. It was awful. I could handle her though. And compared to the other kids at school who had it much worse, I was okay. I felt bad for them and wished I could stand up to her and protect them but I wasn't brave enough. To be honest, it wasn't just because I didn't have the courage to stand up to her, it was also because there were way too many advantages of being her friend. She was always generous and gave me all her old clothes, even if she'd only worn them once. She had this super cute skirt, but then she saw another girl wearing it and immediately gave it to me. She gave me a brand new pair of high heels that she said made her legs look fat. Honestly, most of my pretty clothes and shoes came from her, and she always brought me gifts back from her family's luxury vacations. But despite all this, I couldn't ignore the slight resentment I felt towards her. And, okay, there's a bigger reason why I put up with how unfairly she treated me. You see, Tasman has a twin brother called Trevor, and I had a major crush on him! Hanging out with Tasman meant I got to see Trevor more often, Compared to his sister, Trevor was so chilled, but sometimes he was quite cold, even slightly mysterious. So that's why they didn't really get along. Tasman always said mean things about him behind his back. Things like how he was just so lame and such a grandpa. But one time, I almost messed things up while hanging out at their house. Trevor was chilling and playing guitar out on the patio by himself, so I pretended to wander around then approached and complimented him. But Tasman caught sight of that while looking out from the kitchen. Afterwards, she grabbed me and said, Hey, what was that? Did you just flirt with my brother? Ew, uh, do you have some kind of crush on him? Don't you dare. If you do, then our friendship is over right now. I was so shocked at how she reacted, so I quickly denied it and said, Ew, come on, your brother is gross. I hoped she couldn't tell I was lying. After that incident, I told Tasman I had to go home, as I had some crafts to finish. She just burst out laughing and said crafting was for losers. It really upset me though because I loved doing DIY stuff, and my cousins and the kids next door had asked me to start teaching them how to do it. My one cousin had even persuaded me to start making videos on it. 
So even though Tasman thought it was totally uncool, I still went ahead and secretly started a YouTube channel to share my DIY tutorial videos. The kids on my street all loved it. And pretty soon, I had quite a few subscribers. Then I took it a step further and made hand puppets of some popular cartoon characters and started doing puppet show videos. Slowly but surely, my channel started to pick up speed. There was one viewer with an account called Cherry Pie that was always the first to leave a comment. She'd even DM'd me on my channel's Twitter account, and we started talking almost every day after that. One day, I decided to make a video to properly introduce myself to my channel's viewers, but I was too shy to show my face, so I did it with the puppets instead. The audience seemed to be more interested when I talked about my own life, and so I started telling them about my family and friends, and of course, that included Tasman. But I changed everyone's names to fun nicknames and changed my voice a bit so no one would recognize me. I started to talk a lot about Tasman and how she tortured me and the other kids. I gave her a horrible voice that sounded like a monster and even showed how she would laugh at what people were wearing. I got so into it that I started to make stuff up, like saying how she stole other kids' lunch money, made them do homework for her, and made them buy her snacks during each recess. She always acted like she was some kind of queen. I realized how many feelings I'd buried deep inside me over the years, and now I had this creative outlet to release them all. I even shared the story of when Tasman got dumped by her ex-boyfriend and how she tried to get him back and turned up on his doorstep. He was with his new girlfriend, and she started clinging to his ankle, begging him to ask her out again. Tasman would die if she knew I'd shared this, but I couldn't stop myself. After uploading that video, I gained so many views and subscribers, it seemed like people could really relate to these stories of mine. But weirdly, my number one fan, Cherry Pie, disappeared. I really missed her, to be honest. A few days later at school, everyone was whispering about my channel, and it quickly became clear that they knew about my videos. How had they found out? But then, to my complete horror, I realized they could see my school uniform in one of the videos, and everyone realized the villain I was talking about was Tasman. She was furious about it, and said she was going to find out which of these losers had done it and make their life hell. I was so terrified, I set all my videos to private and even took a few days off school, as I felt so worried about what would happen if she discovered it had been me. Then one day, Cherry Pie suddenly DM'd me again. I thought she was going to ask about where the videos had gone, but instead she said, Looks like you got what you wished for. Everyone's talking about your channel, and now you're finally in the limelight. Oh. My God. Did this girl also go to our school? Who was she? It couldn't be Tasman. Could it? I replied with like a hundred questions, asking who she was. Did she know who I was? How did she find me, and what did she want? But I got no reply. But then, a few hours later, I got a message saying, Come outside. What? How creepy! I started to feel scared that maybe I had a stalker or something. I grabbed my pepper spray and headed outside. But instead of some crazy fangirl, Trevor was standing there. Hang on, Trevor is Cherry Pie? He said he'd found out about my channel because one time at their house, I'd been reading the comments on my phone, and he'd passed behind me and caught sight of the name of the channel. He became curious, so he made a fake account so he could watch my videos, and that's when he developed a crush on me and enjoyed watching them regularly. Well, that was until I mentioned his sister and made up all those fake stories about things she'd done. That's how Tasman found out about the videos. She borrowed Trevor's laptop one day and saw it open on his screen. But at least the only person who knows it's my channel is Trevor. He said he was really disappointed in me and thought I was better than that. Then he said he was going to delete his fake account because he didn't want to be a phony liar like me. I was heartbroken. How could I have been such a terrible person? I don't know what to do. Should I confess to Tasman that it was me and apologize to her and Trevor and hope they'll forgive me? Or should I just keep quiet and instead focus on being able to stand up for myself and tell Tasman that it's not okay to pick on people? Not every day a girl outside the aerospace community like me could attend this 
creative science festival thingy, but here I was, all thanks to my genius boyfriend Mike, who just got accepted into MIT's aerospace engineering program. This is all really interesting. So great that Mike brought me here. Hey, you ruined my project. Who are you? Sorry, I, I'm Mike's, Mike? I can't believe he's talking to another girl when his girlfriend is in trouble here. The girl followed Mike and immediately fixed the model I just broke. Such an unfortunate brain behind her flashy clothes. Shh, keep it down. She's Mike's girlfriend. Really? Our valedictorian is into airheads? Huh? I thought Mike and Liana were a thing. Liana, the pretty girl who just fixed a freaking spacecraft model in a split second is being paired with my boyfriend? I'm Chloe, by the way. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself sooner. I just, ugh, never felt so self-conscious before. Mike and I have been together since high school. Back then, I was popular and had many boys chasing me. Everyone seemed amazed that a girl like me was with a nerd like him. But now, Mike's already an intern at NASA despite being only a freshman. Looks like he's a celebrity among his peers. And I was just his brainless girlfriend. For the first time ever, I felt like I had no place being such an elite student's girlfriend. I couldn't stop thinking about what happened at the science festival, so I decided to talk about it in my talk show, Bubble Buzz. Although I didn't show my face, I had heaps of listeners and every time the show was on, they flooded my comments section with excitement. Welcome back, my friends. So today's topic is, can a person's heart change when they go to college? I have a friend, Sally. She's been with her boyfriend for two years, 10 months and 21 days. But now he's gone to college in another state, living among new friends and new girls. Should she be worried that she'll become old news? Obviously, out of sight, out of mind, your friend should dump him before he does. No matter how good a relationship is, it can't escape the three-year curse. The three-year thing is real. All high school romances are doomed in the real world. Mike and I had been together for almost three years. Was this three-year curse really hitting us? Every comment seemed to believe it, while user Twinkle Star seemed to think this whole curse was silly. Curses don't exist. Relationships aren't easy. Both partners have to be willing to make an effort in their long-term relationship. Two years or ten years, it's irrelevant. Why does someone as serious as Twinkle Star listen to my show anyway? Since my early days hosting the show, this person always comments with confusing and boring quotes. I'm sure the curse was not a silly thing at all. Whether it was my three-year friendship with my first best friend Ella, or my parents divorcing after three years of marriage, the three-year milestone was real. Actually, I do know one couple who beat the curse. They're my grandparents. Grandpa's rather a cold and reserved person who only had eyes for his wife. So I asked Grandma what the secret to their successful relationship was. First, be grateful for your partner and not take love for granted. Second, know him better than you know yourself. Third, learn to forgive and apologize. Was that it? That wasn't exactly helpful. Our relationship was in a life or death situation and I needed to really do something. Right that moment, someone appeared in the kitchen and I couldn't believe it. My sister Mindy. I hadn't seen her in ages since she moved out with dad. I explained my fears to Mindy and she seemed to understand exactly why I was so concerned. Don't worry, sis. I'll stay here for a while so I can help you two overcome this curse and reignite your passion. First of all, as Mike's the biggest nerd I know, you need to appear more academic. Taking Mindy's advice, I gave myself this academia aesthetic, then went to see Mike at the amusement park. Oh look, there he is. Huh? Chloe? Um, you look different. Since when did you wear glasses? I've, um, always worn them, Mike. You must not have noticed. I stayed up late last night to watch a physics documentary. Now it's time to impress Mike with my knowledge about how water fountains actually work without electricity and run solely on gravity. How the fat in ice cream impacts the freezing point and I could taste the fat droplets. And how g-force and inertia were taken into account when mechanics made roller coasters for the thrill. But he didn't seem impressed at all. Chloe, you're not yourself today. Are you okay? I'm not okay. I've been wiggling my foot at you for ages, but you never noticed my undone laces. You didn't let me try your ice cream first, as you always do, and you didn't notice the effort I put into learning all this sciencey stuff for you. I'm sorry. I have this big project on my mind, and... Mike Jenkins, you've changed. The Mike I know and love was attentive and wouldn't let me walk around with untied shoes. You don't love me anymore. It all got too much for me, so I hurried off. Well, as quickly as I could with my shoelaces flailing. 
As soon as I got home, I phoned Mindy and told her everything. I was so lucky to have my big sis. OMG, he did what? It sounds like he just doesn't care about you anymore. Do you think? Um, maybe... Maybe he was just... No. If he cared, he would have come after you. Instead, he let you walk on dangerous sneakers. Mindy was right. Mike grew cold on me. This three-year curse was real. Now what should I do? There's only one thing. You'll have to test him. I've been sitting here for the past hour, and Mike hasn't... Here he comes. This was Mindy's idea. Faking a car malfunction and calling Mike for help. Wow, you're so good. I'd still be stranded here alone without you. You could have asked someone else or called a garage. There wasn't even anything wrong with... It doesn't matter. But you're my boyfriend. Yes, your very busy boyfriend who lives in a different state. Anyway, I got a dash, and we'll have to take a rain check on next week. I have a lot on my plate. Then Mike left, leaving me more afraid of losing him than ever. As if he just left. His new environment changed him even more than I thought. Chloe, you have to infiltrate his space now before you lose him forever. So I went sneaking into Mike's dorm room and transformed it from nerdy to romantic chic. I hear footsteps. I better hide. I can't wait for him to see it. There's Mike, but, huh? Who's with him? Oh, wow. Romantic much? Then the other person started taking their clothes off. I leaped out of the closet ready to tackle this man-stealer to the ground, but hold on a second. That's actually a man. Mike's roommate, Gus? Chloe, um, what are you doing here? I'm sorry. I just wanted to surprise you and, and ask you to come on a date with me today, tomorrow, whenever you're free. I told you I'm busy this week. I have an inspection tomorrow. So, you mean I'm bothering you? You don't need me anymore? Here, you can use my ID card and go with Mike to the inspection. Make it a hot date. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. One way or another, my infiltration mission was a success. Hehe. <laughs> The next day, I came to this technical area with Mike and just stuck to him, not knowing what else I was supposed to do. Chloe, don't touch anything, okay? Mike, there you are. You have to come and see this. She dragged him off, and did she just smirk at me? Ugh, what an awful pick-me girl. She was obviously trying to separate us. No way was I gonna let her get away with that. I'd show them all that I deserve to be with him. While Liana's by herself walking around with a VR headset, I came to tell her to keep her hands off my boyfriend. Oh, there you are. Stay away from Mike. Little do you know that he has a girlfriend. You're just a clingy airhead that he's too polite to break up with. I'm the perfect girl for him, not you. I, I'm the most influential radio host on social media, and a third wheel like you call me an airhead? I'll make sure everyone knows what a horrible person you are. Really, so scary. As if I'll be worried about those pathetic gossip girls. How dare she? I pushed her, and suddenly, smash! Her headset broke into pieces on the floor. Oh no, Mike told me not to touch anything. What are you doing here? What happened? I'm so sorry, Chloe. I know that you're not okay with this whole thing, but I'm Mike's teammate, and we have to interact a lot. Nothing is going on between us. You're overreacting. Then she ran away in tears like she wasn't at fault. She's lying. I didn't say that. She said she wants. Chloe, enough. I'm too busy to worry about what chaos you're going to cause next. I think we should take a break. He took the ID pass off me, leaving me feeling like my whole world had crumbled. After crying an ocean of tears, I decided to make this right. I threw away my ego and texted him first. But before I hit send, I received a message from Mike saying he was sorry and we would have a trip to celebrate our three-year anniversary. This meant we weren't over and the curse wasn't true. Ooh, I needed to figure out which outfits to bring. I got everything packed and ready for our vacation of a lifetime. It was gonna be so romantic. But all of a sudden, Liana rushed to us and flung her arms around Mike. My pet dog, Nova, she's... She's passed away. I can't be alone right now. I'd rather die. That lying party pooper. Poor Mike didn't know what to say, so she just jumped in the back seat without my permission. No problem. The more, the merrier. I'll invite my sister to join us too. Mindy proved to be super useful, always interjecting whenever Liana approached Mike. But Liana just became more and more shameless. She glued herself to Mike and had the audacity to lie down next to him like I was invisible and even ate his ice cream. Worse still, my oblivious boyfriend didn't seem bothered at all. She's more cunning than I thought. You need to step up your game. 
It was such a beautiful night, but that third wheel Liana was buzzing around Mike like a mosquito. Then she started talking about physics stuff, and now he's so caught up in their conversation, I may as well have disappeared. Hmm, how could I make Liana see Mike loves me, not her? Well, I wasn't sure if he loves me anymore. Chloe, 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 you long for attention so badly you're willing to hurt yourself. She's already hurt because of you. This is her special three-year anniversary, and you invited yourself like how you've always wormed your way in. I bet you don't even have a dog. I diverted my gaze from a fake crying Liana to a confused looking Mike. Chloe, what are you trying to do? I'm worried you've lost your passion for me because we're at the three-year mark. We have different interests and I can't help but feel insecure about us. If you keep acting like this, well, I just don't know. I've been thinking about our future too, and I've decided it's time for us to... Oh, no, no, no! This isn't happening! I think I'm pregnant! We got back two days ago, and Mike still hadn't contacted me. This curse had caught up with me, and I lost him for good. I just wish I hadn't lied about the baby. Then maybe our breakup wouldn't have been so awkward. This called for retail therapy. I stepped outside and saw Mike with a massive suitcase. Chloe, I've abandoned the project and dropped out of college. I'm going to take care of you, both of you. Mike scurried around the house to make it pregnant woman friendly. He threw out all junk food, coffee, and even mayonnaise. Also, my high heels were packed away and Mozart was played everywhere in the house. Apparently, it'll make the baby a genius. We were going to have the perfect, happy family life. But when I went to my room to get my laptop for my next radio show, I couldn't find it anywhere. I asked Mike and he said, I packed it up with your high heels, makeup, books, and put them all in storage. You don't need any distractions. Just me, you, and the baby from now on. No more radio, studying, or friends. We can have a bunch of kids and grow old in this house. What? This wasn't what I wanted. Neither of us should have boring, unfulfilling lives or give up our dreams, right? I might not have my laptop, but I still had my phone. Welcome back! Today's topic is my friend Sally, again. She lied about being pregnant so her boyfriend wouldn't leave her. Should she keep lying or tell the truth? This time, Twinkle Star appeared again. I know she's always been a brave girl who isn't afraid of admitting her own faults and correcting her mistakes. She should tell her boyfriend the truth and explain how much she loves him. Hmm, sounds oddly specific. Who's this person? Actually, Bubble Buzz, we know each other. Before I could ask him anything else, Twinkle Star went offline. Whoever that was, I think they were right. So I went downstairs to talk to Mike, only he wasn't there. Instead, Mindy jumped out of nowhere holding a pregnancy test and a bottle of Coke. I just need to dunk this in here and the plus sign will show up clear as day in case Mike has any doubt about the baby. No need to, I'm going to tell him the truth. Are you sure about that? What if Mike gets mad? I stopped and thought about it. No, as scary as it was, I couldn't do this anymore. I was looking out for Mike by telling him the truth. Where was he? He had to be around here somewhere. Liana, why was she here with Mike? Mike, I'm sorry, but Chloe's not pregnant. She admitted on her radio show. You deserve to be with someone who wouldn't make up such awful lies. Someone like me. Oh no, I lost the chance to tell him firsthand. Now Mike would never talk to me ever again. Chloe, wait. I couldn't turn around and bear the disappointment in his eyes. I couldn't blame anyone, any third wheel or curse for destroying my relationship. Hey there, I know this is an unscheduled show, but I wanted to talk to y'all. That girl I talked about yesterday, Sally, well, she's me. I faked being pregnant to keep my relationship, but my boyfriend hates me now. I was so terrified of this three-year curse that I became this jealous monster. Mike even dropped out because of me. I'm so selfish for expecting him to spend every minute of his day with me. He needs his own life too. We both do. It's the time apart that makes our time together more exciting and our love more passionate. Now we've broken up and it's all my fault. I stopped to catch my breath. Who told you I wanted to break up? Didn't, didn't you say you thought carefully about our future and made a decision? You know what, after all your silly shenanigans, including faking your pregnancy, I'm still madly in love with you. So the decision I made was, Chloe Ruth Evanson, you're crazy, kooky, and one of a kind. I can't stand the thought of not having you in my life. Will you marry me? Yes? But Mike, after our engagement, you should continue your studies, projects, internship and whatnot. You don't have to stay by my side all the time. What? I thought you'd like that. We can be together all day and make enough babies for a soccer team, right? Relax, I'm just kidding. I knew you were lying about the baby all along. Your grandpa told me. 
Turns out, Twinkle Star was none other than my grandpa, who saw that I needed some guidance and tried to give me objective advice. Mike only went along with the lie to tease me. Hmm, who knew my nerdy boyfriend could be so playful? Or should I say, my fiancé? Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one more to go, and two hundred thousand followers! <laughs> it looks like I'm making quite an impression on the world. Hey, you're looking at the hottest beauty and lifestyle influencer of Park Springs High School. Beauty and brains? I have both. <laughs> it's not surprising, is it? Obviously, a girl like me gets loads of attention. Oh, there are Nerdy Ben is, my number one fanboy. He's always following me around school and offering to help me with, well, everything. I can't blame him. I mean, I'm basically his queen. Hey, Ben. I didn't see you at my locker as usual. Are you good? I, I'm out of money today, so... Wait, Ben, don't say it like that. People will think I mugged you or something. I never ask for those groceries or sundries. Y yes, you don't. Um, sorry. Okay, so that was weird. Then things got even stranger when I overheard Christine telling her friends that after being exposed, an anonymous IG singer's followers had skyrocketed to a whopping 500,000. But the thing was... She went to school here. She's that nobody in bio class, Stella. Stella hurried past me into class, followed by a flock of people trying to take her pick and asking her to sing. Blah, blah, blah. Some of the boys even offered to take her home after class. Poof, please. What were they thinking? Ugh. She could play the fragile and confused act on these losers, but she didn't fool me. The dropped book scenario was so overrated, but, huh? Why was Ben rushing to pick it up? What a traitor! Ben! Where's my homework? He couldn't even come up with a better excuse than, Um, I went out last night. This was baloney! I just heard him offer to help Stella with her homework. And guess what? This girl, still with her Little Miss shy facade up, told Ben that she could do her own essay. Ugh. Did she think she was Beyonce or what? Acting all high and thinking she's the beacon of the universe? I was furious. So she wanted a taste of fame, huh? Let's just say, as a senior in this field, having experienced its downside, it was time I taught her some manners. <laughs> After that, I made sure she became the main topic of every single talk in school. Hey, she needed to learn how this fame game worked. Everyone was giggling, pointing, and whispering behind her back. She had to cover herself with a hoodie that hid half of her face and walk through school in anxiety. Yeah. I know that paranoid feeling all too well when you obsess with why people keep on giving you odd looks. Then one day, I was putting my books back in my locker when I glimpsed someone running past me crying. It was Stella. And she dropped a note that said, If I were you, I wouldn't have shown up at school ever again. You're a joke. Gosh, do people even say these things? This was way too harsh. What happened? For God's sake. He didn't think I was the one who wrote this, did he? From that day on, Ben completely ignored me. And worse, he was glued to Stella, comforting her as people talked behind her back. Ugh. Then one day, I was tying my shoelaces when I heard some cheerleaders trying to open someone's phone. Right at that moment, Stella stepped out of the shower stall. Upset to see others violating her privacy, she tried to fight back. But oh boy, this wallflower couldn't even make them budge. <sighs> 
fine, I'll help her. But only this time. You tattletale! You think you run the place now just because you're popular? Go tell Ben I didn't put that note in your locker. Better yet, call him right now! Oh, come on! Just run to the bleachers and tell that nerd! Go! What are you looking at? I went over to the bleachers to find Ben comforting Stella. What now? Snitching on me again? Actually, Stella was just telling me that you didn't write that note. Could you be any more foolish? So, you're just gonna bluntly do whatever I tell you to? Don't mind her. It's just who she is. A bit rough, but a truly great friend. Uh, I don't make friends. Yeah, I'd learned it the hard way. Back in my early days on Instagram, the only friend I trusted posted a video of me changing in the school's shower stall. I still had my tea inside my shirt, but that taught me a cruel lesson about friendships and fame. When you're famous, people will always want something from you. You can't trust anyone at all. You hear me? Stella! Who's that? Liam, Stella's friend from the music club. They look good together, don't they? What? Are you jealous of him or something? For that silly chick? Ben didn't say anything, but just blankly stared at them. Huh? He never looked at me like that anymore. Now I was no longer the Instagram queen. That meant I was no longer his queen. <sighs> it was true there was no one I could trust. A few days later, there was a big football match. We were going up against our rival school for the final, and Stella was singing the national anthem. Even the mayor and a local TV station showed up for it. Crazy! Ben was part of the AV team, so when some dude told me Ben wanted to talk to me, I went to the AV room to find him. What did he want to talk about? Hopefully not something to do with Stella. Ugh. But as I got there... No one was around. Huh? Right at that moment, the screen showed Stella stepping up to the podium preparing to sing. But instead of the soothing melody, a string of strange, distorted sounds came out of her mic. What was going on? What are you doing here? Ashley! He pushed me aside and hurriedly fixed the sound system. And just a minute later... Things were back to normal and Stella could restart the song. Ben gave me an accusing look, then dragged me behind the bleachers, where we met up with Stella and Liam. Then Ben told her I'd messed with her mic. Ugh! How could he think I was capable of something like that? Meanwhile, this Liam guy stepped in, saying it could have been a technical error. Yeah, whatever. I went to leave, but Liam caught up with me. Weird. Weren't he and Stella having a thing? He immediately denied it, saying they were just acquaintances from music club. But you, I've been wanting to get closer to you for a while. You're the true Instagram queen, not Stella. Whoa, this guy was a top-class jerk. Just a minute ago, he had his hands wrapped around Stella, and now he was trying to leech onto me. He even started leaning in to kiss me on the cheek. Quickly, I dodged it, as I met Stella's gloomy look from behind. Yikes. It was time to get out of here. I didn't sleep so well. Ugh. All this stress was bad for my skin. So, I was groggily making my way along the school corridor when Stella stormed up to me. It was you, wasn't it? You were so mean to me threatening to delete my IG account because you were so jealous Ben had left you for me. Now it's really gone, and it's all your fault. What are you talking about? I had nothing to do with your stupid account. Yeah, I gossiped about you to mess with you a bit, but that was all. And you, you think I did it too? Excuse me? Did he just ignore me? And there Ben was, my so-called friend who turned his back at me right at the moment I needed him the most. And I never threatened to delete her account. Why did she make it up? Was she that jealous of me and Liam yesterday? 
What's this? An unexpected message from Liam said, Hey, Ashley, don't worry, sweetie. I've got your back. What do you say we meet at 8 p.m. in the park? Ugh, this shameless, two-faced jerk. What was he up to this time? So after class, I slid a note into Stella's locker, pretending to be from Liam, saying, I have a surprise for you. See you at 8 p.m. in the park. I arrived on time to find Liam already waiting. He kept putting on this simping act like he was madly in love with me or something. I can help you prove everything, and I only ask for one tiny favor, that you'll be my girlfriend. You can do that? But how? Well, you can just simply put the blame on someone else. Let's say, Ben? Oh, honey, you don't have to do anything. Just come to me and let your man handle it. Ugh, this guy made me want to barf. But I still had to play it cool so I could figure out what this dude had up his sleeves. Sounds interesting, but I want to know more. How are you going to carry out your master plan? Honey, I've already got all the pieces of evidence in my hands. <laughs> you mean... That's right. I was the one who deleted Stella's IG account, and I know a way to blame it on someone else. You did what? Ashley, I let my jealousy blind me. So when I saw him flirting with you right in front of me, I... I just lost it. At least you're not the only fool around here. He played both of us. And for the record, he's so not my type. <laughs> <laughs> Your type? Hmm, let me guess. Someone like... Ben? <laughs> he's such an idiot. He'd never realize I have feelings for him. But you're more of his type than I am. Besides, the way he just abandoned me when I needed him the most. Uh, Ashley, I didn't mean to hurt you like that. What? You've been there the entire time? Yeah, I've heard it all. Including the part about how you have feelings for me. Look, it's not what you think. I'm not into Stella that way. The thing is, I saw her singing at a coffee shop and realized right away she's my favorite anonymous singer on Instagram, so I sort of revealed her identity online. One thing led to another. I felt so guilty I just stayed by Stella's side and accidentally pushed you away. And it's not that I don't trust you. After you left, I tried to convince everyone you didn't do it, but they didn't believe me. Then Stella showed me the note in her locker of Liam asking her out. And I recognized your handwriting. I got worried, so... So... You didn't turn on me? Yeah. I know you can seem cold sometimes. But deep down, you have a good heart. So, turns out that Stella going viral meant some local lounge singer had lost a lot of gigs so she hired Liam to delete Stella's account for good. This guy was no joke. The note, the cheerleaders, the mic accident. He was responsible for it all. Luckily for me, I'd managed to put my phone on record mode for the entire conversation I had with him. So the next day, I went ahead and reported him to the principal. Well, no bad deed goes unpunished. So I hope you enjoy your indefinite suspension, Liam. <laughs> As for me, I no longer go solo anymore, as I have a new friend by my side, who now has quit social media and enjoys her passion for singing. And Ben is still Ben. Such a doofus. But my doofus. Oh God, can I not save one from the pitiless wave? Is all that we see or seem but a dream within a dream? According to the poet, this world and all existing life is an illusion of sorts. As reality doesn't exist, philosophers refer to it as dream argument and dream hypothesis. What? What an interesting lesson! By the way, look at how there's a ray of sunshine coming through the curtains. That's so pretty. 
This kind of weather indeed puts you in such a dreamy mood, huh? Yeah, right. But remember, there is no rose without thorns. That sunshine may look glorious, but it will harm your eyes. Yeah, I know. The maids always tell me that sunlight is the enemy for me. For my beautiful, sensitive blue eyes. Looking at it once, and I'll never be able to see anything again. That's why I've never been allowed to leave this castle. My maids all look identical in those masks, don't they? When I was a child, of course, I once got curious, and I pulled one of them off. As punishment, I was denied dessert for a whole week. And worse still, it wasn't worth it, as the maid's face was exceedingly ordinary. The masks looked far better. Anyway, I suppose all that matters is that they take great care of me. Each day they bring me food, water, and new clothes. I was sipping my leek and potato soup when I heard a scream. Let me out! Curious, I went and hid in a corner and saw two maids attempting to lock the screaming girl into a room. Hmm, I've never seen that girl in this castle before. I wonder if she's from the outside world. Poor her. It looks like she can't control herself. The world out there is scary. Perhaps it has sent her into madness. It's much safer here in the castle. I can play all day, paint, knit, and read. Oh, how peaceful. Hmm. But I still couldn't stop thinking about that poor girl. I wonder what will happen to her. The screaming didn't stop, and my curiosity got the best of me. So I snuck into the girl's room. Shh. Stop screaming. No one is listening. Uh, who are you? Uh... Um, my name is... Mistress. What's yours? <laughs> Mistress isn't a name. Are you stupid? It's just a name. Everybody here calls me that. This girl was so stubborn. She seemed to be wary of everything. Poor little outside world girl. After much persistence, she told me that her name was Nora. I was about to ask her why she was here when suddenly two maids appeared and dragged me away. Mistress, you should not interact with this wicked girl, and you mustn't be late for your embroidery class. <sighs> it was nice to finally get to talk to a girl my own age, and I must admit that given her brash nature, I found Nora rather interesting. During class, I kept thinking about how I could sneak out and see her again. Ah! Ouch! That annoying girl screaming made me prick my finger. I ran out to check on her, but the maids immediately blocked my way. Perhaps I could talk some sense into her. Trust me, the last time I spoke to her, she was acting totally normal. The desperate maids exchanged looks, then let me go to her. As predicted, when I approached Nora, she stopped screaming. Hey, it's Ariana. That's my real name. Screaming never works here. Just pretend you're listening to my words, then I'll help you out. The maids were quite surprised when Nora immediately calmed herself down and showed signs of following directions, so they let us be and left. We began to chat, and ever since then, the maids let me see Nora every day. She told me how before her mother died, she gave Nora an address to find her biological father who she'd never met before. Nora's grandma helped her set up a meeting with him and took her to the meeting point. She was so nervous, but happy at the same time to finally meet her dad. And at first, he was as kind and charming as she imagined. But then unexpectedly, right after they said goodbye to her grandma, he brought Nora here and let those masked people lock her up. But you're fortunate to be here, as it's safe. No, it's not. That's just what they want you to believe. Then Nora told me about the outside world, about her friends, school, and shopping malls. Every day, she even drew me paintings of the outside world, of beautiful memories with her family, her mom who passed away, and also her dad, even though she only met him once. Family? What is that? All I'd ever known were the faceless maids. 
The next day when I visited Nora as usual, she suddenly told me, Sis, we need to get out of here. What do you mean? This is my home. No, it's not. It's a prison. Who on earth stays inside for 14 years, huh? It's because of my eyes. I'll go blind if I go out there. My maids only want the best for me. That's why they keep me here. Are you crazy? You've been tricked. Just think about it. Do you know who gave birth to you? And why did that person leave you with these people? Or are these people the ones who took you away from your mom? Don't you want to find out the truth? This was my home, wasn't it? But thinking about what Nora just said, as well as the outside world that she rambled about every day, I suppose it would be interesting to experience it for myself. I just have to try my best to protect my eyes. So, I snuck into the housekeeper's room and stole the front door key. As we approached the main hall leading to the door, we saw a masked woman standing by a man. In his arms was a young girl, deep asleep. H huh? Th that's my dad. What? Did he come to pick you up or something? Don't you see that they're all in the same boat? And she's the ringleader. I peered closer at them and spotted the masked woman's silver hair and luxurious dress. Isn't that my tester? She lives in the Grand Suite and visits me weekly to assess my learning and etiquette. Mom, how are you going to handle this case? Just leave her in the empty room at the end of the hallway. As for Nora, I think she'll settle in properly in a week or so. Then we can start her etiquette and culture lessons. Which Nora? Ah, I remember. Besides, you should restrict yourself a bit. Ariana... Nora, and now this child? Don't let the list of your illegitimate children be as long as your arm. Then you can just throw them away somewhere. Why bother raising them? They are my grandchildren, after all. They can't end up like those street rats. And who knows? They may become useful. But this has to be the last one. We can't risk Laura finding out about us. It would ruin our family's affluent name. Do you understand? I know, but fear not, as my wife is kind and foolish. She is completely clueless to these matters, thanks to your smart move. So, we were this heartless man's illegitimate children? And because of his deceit, he was forcing us to live in darkness? I don't want to be locked up and lied to any longer. We needed to escape. From then on... Nora kept her act up and behaved like an angel, which eventually led to us being allowed to study together. And today is the day. Oriana is having a convulsion! We must take her to the hospital as soon as possible! However, the maids called the doctor to come around here instead. No! The plan was to escape when we were taken outside. If the doctor came here... He'd discover that my rashes were painted on and our plan would be disclosed. Okay, plan B. I was still lying on the bed playing the whole role of a patient while Nora locked the door of the room and went to the bathroom screaming. Help! There's a giant spider in here! As expected, the doctor went to check. Then Nora immediately locked him in. Then we quickly took the knotted string made of the fabrics and embroidery class out from under the bed and then escaped through the window. Ah! I got my head between my hands as soon as I landed. I didn't expect it to be so bright outside. It's burning my eyes, Nora! What? There's no time for your hysterics. You'll be done if you're stuck here anyway. Just open your eyes and run! Hurry up! But I'm scared! Huh? Nothing happened. My eyes seemed fine. But no time to celebrate as then I saw... Oh my god. A couple of maids were chasing after me. Nora pulled my hand and ran towards the garden. Fortunately, we were already out of their sight when... Woof! Woof! A huge hound appeared out of nowhere and growled at us. I crouched down in a bush and watched Nora wave the dog closer. And then pat him. What? Magic! The dog suddenly became unusually obedient and led us to a secret place. 
a dog-sized passageway. I hesitated, but seeing the maids gaining on us, I reluctantly squeezed through it real quick. I can't believe I'm putting my destiny in the hands of this reckless girl. She said we had to get to her grandmother's house right away for help. What are those things running back and forth on the road? Why are they making that loud, annoying noise? Hmm. And why is Nora waving her arms about? Did she want them to stop? Too bad nobody did, as she's no princess. We kept wandering until we saw something which Nora called a truck parked on the roadside. She rushed over, then helped me onto the back of it. Oh, it was full of bananas! I stuffed my mouth full of them to ward off my starvation, while the scenery kept changing. That thing stopped, and we immediately got off before getting caught. I held her tight, frightened of all the people around us. They kept staring at me. And what kind of style was that? They all looked very peculiar. Maybe they were just commoners. Then we used our power to demand a man to take us to Nora's grandma's. Oh... It was exhausting. What? The outside is actually beautiful, sparkling with all those lights. And there are exhibitions of everything in the world, such as food, toys, flowers, and even creatures. Yes, everything. But the most important thing was that my eyes didn't get sore looking at those shiny things at all. Nora's grandma seems kind but her home is full of the strangest of items. While Nora told her what had happened, I found myself bewitched by the talking black box on the wall. Suddenly, Nora's grandma led us to her far smaller truck and took us to somewhere called the Cops. They all wore these same funny outfits and bombarded us with dozens of confusing questions. And what exactly is an ID card? A few days later, there was news that the cops had caught my so-called dad, grandma, and maids also. As predicted, he was a womanizer, so when his lovers asked him to support his children, he was so afraid that his wife would find out that he took these children and locked them away in the castle. They're currently awaiting something called a trial, which Nora says is where bad people get their comeuppance. Whoa! The world outside is so busy. I didn't realize there'd be so many unmasked faces. And that strange talking box still startles me, especially when someone is holding a weapon. Nora says when I've adjusted to my new life a little more, I'll start school with her. And one day I'll even learn how to drive one of those smaller trucks. But firstly, she's teaching me how to dress like other people do and use this brick to communicate with them. This world is puzzling, but I'm sure with Nora's help, I'll soon find my feet, even if it's just so I can learn how to reply to my dashing neighbor. These need to be washed by hand. Kelly threw a pile of clothes on the floor. And be quick about it! Hey, I'm Maya, and that bossy girl is Kelly. Although we live in the same house, we aren't siblings. You see, when I was just a baby, I was adopted by a loving old couple. They lived on a farm in the countryside. Their kids had grown up and left home, and they were both missing the lively energy that only a child could bring. One Sunday at church, they saw the priest raising a baby girl and offered to help. So that's how they ended up taking me home and bringing me up as their grandchild. They were the nicest people, and they showered me in nothing but love and kindness. I'm always more than grateful for them. We lived together happily, until one day, when Grandpa was in the orchard, he collapsed. Sadly, he passed away. Grandma was never the same after that. She'd lost her soulmate. Her health also deteriorated, and then one night, she called me into her room. And gripping my hand, she said, Sweetie. You brought so much joy into our lives. Without us, life could be tough. But don't worry, we're always with you. When I'm gone, go find my old purse hidden in the broken tractor in the back barn. We've saved up a little bit for you. Our little Maya have to live your best life. All right? 
then before I could ask her any more about this, she closed her eyes, and just like that, she'd left me forever. I stayed with her for hours, crying my heart out. Afterward, following Grandma's words, I went in search of the money. Oh, God! I gasped in shock as I opened the purse. There was at least $20,000 here! How did my grandparents manage to save up such an amount of money? I knew they were thrifty, but this was way too much. After that, I moved to Columbus to live with my grandparents' daughter, Mrs. Madison, and her daughter, Kelly. So you're wondering what I did with the money, right? Well, I keep it hidden here, in this crack in the roof. Oh, someone's coming. Your room is disgusting. Anyway... Kelly and I are going out, so make sure you clean everywhere before we get back. I expect it to be spotless. I gave a weak nod and watched her totter away. This wasn't a new occurrence. Every day, they'd mess up the house, then force me to clean it. I know, I was basically the real-life Cinderella. But it's okay. As soon as I turned 18, I'm gonna leave this place anyway and start living my own life with my money. The next morning, it was raining, so I tried to walk to school as fast as possible, when suddenly, Kelly drove past me and deliberately sped through this big puddle. Mud splattered all over me. Jeez, why is torturing me her favorite hobby? My shirt was filthy, and as I walked toward my locker, some girls laughed at me. One even sneered. The dirty look must be trendy in the countryside but here it just looks tragic. Yeah, I've been in the city for almost a year now, but I still couldn't fit in. Maybe it's because I always wear the same worn-out clothes and borrow all my books from the library. Mrs. Madison refused to buy me anything new, and I couldn't use my own money, as that would look suspicious. I couldn't even afford to go on the school picnic. <sighs> I'd never be one of them. Then, during recess, the class monitor Josie informed everyone that prom was happening soon and the dress code was formal. While all the other kids squealed and clapped excitedly, I lowered my head and sighed. I had nothing to wear to prom. Maya? Hearing my name broke me from my thoughts, and I realized it was Josie, and standing around her were some of the nice girls from class. You have to come to prom this time, please? You've never joined us in any other activities before. Don't worry, we will help you look spectacular. I gave an awkward smile and replied, Thanks, guys, but I can't expect you to do that. They all insisted that I should go, but I remained adamant that it wasn't my kind of thing. Then came Meanie Kelly. Maya isn't suitable for this type of event. How dare she say that? I mean... Just because I wasn't a spoiled princess didn't mean I wasn't suitable to attend. So I turned to Josie and smiled. Actually, that sounds fun. I will go to the prom. That evening at dinner, I mentioned the prom to Mrs. Madison and suggested that it could be a reward in exchange for doing all the housework. She coldly replied, You live under my roof rent-free, and now you expect me to do housework for you too? Or what, your majesty? Then she turned to Kelly, smiled and asked, Darling, have you decided on a prom dress yet? Then Kelly showed her mom pictures of gorgeous dresses on her phone while throwing smirks at me. Ugh, I couldn't sit around looking at Kelly's smug face anymore. This time, I definitely had to go to prom and be prettier than her. So that weekend, I went thrift store shopping with Josie. And after looking in about a dozen stores, Josie lifted up this really pretty blue gown. It had a tear down the side, but I knew I could easily sew that up and thrift flip it a little. I'd seen people do that on YouTube. The night of the prom, Josie did my hair and makeup, and I showed up in the dress. I felt like a real-life princess, and everyone was looking at me and giving me compliments, while Kelly stood there with her arms folded and a sulky look on her face. And then this boy called David walked over to me and started talking. Turns out, he was the new senior here. All the girls had their eyes on him, including Kelly, who walked over and tried offering him a drink. But he snubbed her and continued talking to me. 
leaving her standing there in silent anger before storming out of the prom. I had such a wonderful night with my new friends. I arrived home in a great mood and was happily singing to myself, but this instantly changed when I saw Kelly sitting there waiting for me. Such a thief! Now, don't tell me this fancy dress just fell down on you from the sky! Kelly shouted at me. I insisted that I hadn't stolen anything, so she dragged Mrs. Madison to the living room and asked her to check if she had lost any money recently. Mrs. Madison said no without thinking at first, but when she read Kelly's face, she started to fake complaining about some hundred-dollar bills missing from her purse, and the two started to jump on me. Ugh! Unbelievable! I ran up to my room and tried to shake away the negative thoughts and think back to how happy I was at prom. Then, as usual, I checked my hiding spot. Huh? What was that noise? I looked towards the stairs, but no one was there. Hmm. It was probably just the house creaking or something. The next day at school was amazing, as loads of kids stopped and talked to me. Then, when I got home, I went up to my room and double-checked my hiding spot. My heart plummeted in my chest. The purse! It had gone! I frantically searched for it. Then I remembered hearing something last night, and there were only three of us in this house. Could it be? Furious, I ran into the living room where Mrs. Madison and Kelly were watching TV. I shouted at them. My money! I want it back right now! In an unconcerned tone, Mrs. Madison replied, What money? What are you talking about? Oh, I see. So you have your own money all along, and have been keeping it for yourself? Puff, what an ungrateful brat. Mom lets you live here even though you aren't actually family, and now you're accusing us of stealing? I knew they'd taken my money, but what could I do about it? I had no choice but to go back to my room and cried as I looked at old photos of me with my grandparents. The next day at school, I really wasn't in the mood for lessons. During recess, I was just staring out of the window in despair when I heard a cough. So I looked and saw David there. Hey, Maya. He smiled at me. Are you okay? You seem kind of down. I'm fine. I gathered up my stuff and left. I know he was only being nice, but I wasn't feeling like small talking right now. Then, after school, Kelly made me carry her heavy backpack home. I had no energy left to argue, so I glumly did as she asked. That's when David drove up alongside me and asked, Hey, that looks heavy. Do you need a lift? I nodded and got into his car while forcing a smile to thank him. He asked, Maya, what's up? You can talk to me, you know. I'm a good listener. Promise. He's so sweet, and I instantly felt safe around him. We chatted a lot and started hanging out more and more after that. We took walks through the park and had lunch together. I found myself growing closer to him, but not in the way you might think. No, more like a brother. Then, a few weeks later, when Mrs. Madison made me clean up the mess in the house that she'd made again... I found something under her bed. The old purse that Grandma had left me. And the money was all gone! I stormed downstairs and slammed the purse onto the kitchen table. But Mrs. Madison shrugged. It was my mother's purse. Therefore, that money belongs to me. You obviously stole it from my poor elderly parents. Kelly backed up her mom with her annoying tone. Wow! How low do you have to be to con a sick old lady into giving you her life savings? Grandma left it for me, not you! You two are monsters! I screamed at them, took the purse, and went up to my room. I started to pack, then I was leaving here once and for all. Only, when I went to try the door, I couldn't open it. O.M.G. They'd locked me in! Worse still, in all the drama, I'd left my phone downstairs, so I couldn't even call David for help. The next day, Mrs. Madison let me out, but only on the condition that I did all the housework, and from now on, I wasn't allowed to go to school or anything like that. And if I broke this rule, she'd make sure I ended up in trouble for stealing the money. 
So it is what it is. I had no choice. They've caught me on a string. One afternoon, I was out front watering the flowers when Mrs. Madison shouted out from the living room. No, not the roses. Water the ones over there. You useless girl. Then suddenly, I felt someone yank my arm. It's David. He was worried about my absence, so he came to check on me. Maya, there's someone I want you to meet. Then he signaled me to follow him. I had no idea where David was taking me, but anything would be a way better option than listening to any more of Mrs. Harrison's nagging, so I got in his car. He took me to his house, and there was this man in there. I suppose it's David's dad. But then, with tear-filled eyes, the man blurted out, Maya, it's you, my daughter. You're finally home. Huh? What? So, after I sat down and had a sip of water to brace myself for whatever was about to come, the two told me about how when I was a baby, my mom got sick and passed away. My dad struggled to look after me and my brother, so he gave me to a priest. Eventually, my dad managed to turn his life around, and knowing that I'd been adopted by the elderly couple, he started sending money to them to help them raise me. Then, when he came to find me, I wasn't there anymore. He found out that I was living with the daughter of an elderly couple in Columbus, so he moved to this city with the hope of finding me. It was such a coincidence that David ended up attending the same school as me. David said that the first time he saw me, he felt this strange bond right away, and how amazing that this gut feeling was right, as it soon became clear I was his long-lost sister. Wow, this was a lot to take in, but it was the greatest news ever! I left Mrs. Madison's house after that, of course, and moved in with my dad and brother. And for the first time since I'd lost my grandparents, I found myself feeling truly happy again. Now, you're probably wondering what became of Mrs. Madison and Kelly. Well, I was walking past their house the other day and saw a for sale sign in the yard. Turns out, Mrs. Madison had been spending money like water and now was in debt, so she was having to sell the house. I don't want to gloat or anything, but I guess that's karma for them. Rules, rules, rules. Moms sure do love dishing them out, don't they? I'm Nicole, by the way. And you see, my parents divorced when I was eight, so since then, it's just been me and Mom. Mom laid down a bunch of boring rules for me, but I hate following them. I'm 18, and I should be out having fun, right? To me, rules were made to be broken anyway. And trust me, I broke them. Only, this led to my whole life changing. One day, I had an important math test, but I hate math. So, I skipped school and went to the movies with my friends instead. I mean, hello? The last Avengers movie had just come out. No way was I missing it and getting spoilers. Maybe mom would give me a detention for a few weeks, but it's no big deal, right? I arrived home to find mom waiting for me. She glared at me and said, Nicole, I received an interesting phone call from the school. It turns out you haven't been there all day. So, where have you been? Oh no, busted! I just shrugged and replied, Out! It's those friends of yours, isn't it? They are a bad influence. I walked off to my room. Nicole, come back here and talk! She shouted after me, but I ignored her. Then she yelled out, I can't stand you and your childish attitude anymore. You're going to live with your dad. What? She was kicking me out. Wow, I didn't expect her to do that. Whatever, I was sick of being moaned at all the time. Surely dad would be far more understanding. I hadn't seen dad all that much. In fact, the last time was, um... I think it was my 16th birthday. He was a busy man, as he's the principal at this snooty boy school. And mom wasn't kidding. She called him up, and that evening, he showed up and loaded my stuff into the trunk of his car. It felt super awkward. 
I have no idea what to say to him. Then, about an hour into the seriously tedious journey, he said, I completed all the admission procedures for you, so you can start learning in my school tomorrow. What? It was an all-boys school, and I was a girl. Besides, no way was I studying somewhere where my dad was the principal. Panicked, I asked, but dad, isn't it an all-boys school? He said, it used to be, but of late, we've let a few female students in. I can't go there. You're the principal. It'll be so embarrassing. No way. I'll go to another school or something. He gave me a strict look and said, Mom told me all about your behavior in your old school, and it's unacceptable. So, you'll be learning at my school so I can keep an eye on you. This is not up for debate. OMG, I can't believe it. He was much stricter than Mom. So reluctantly, I muttered out, Fine, but only if you promise not to tell anyone I'm your daughter. He nodded and said, Okay, if that's what you want. The school was like something out of one of those weird movies. You know, where the characters think they're safe, but then start disappearing one by one. For starters, it was situated on a hill, miles from anything else. Inside, well, it was so masculine. Browns and grays, and I didn't see one picture in the entire building. The only female thing in the whole place was the girls' restroom. We had to share everything else with the boys. Talk about an inconvenience. The uniform was the same for boys and girls. An oversized shirt and baggy pants and these gross flat shoes. Yuck! During P.E., girls were forced to do the same workout as the boys. Bench presses, push-ups, and playing soccer is not my idea of fun. Ugh! And there wasn't even a cheerleading squad. Then, there were all these extra dumb rules for the girls, like... Only uniforms are allowed at school. No skirt, no dress, not even jeans. Do the top button of your shirt up. Tie your hair up into this ugly bun. No flirting with the boys. Yep, that was actually a rule. Can you believe this place? I didn't know whether this was a high school or a prison. I thought this was bad, but I soon realized this school had a major problem. Maybe it's because this school was originally boys only, but man, this place didn't appreciate girls at all. Once in a history class, the teacher asked us what year Abraham Lincoln became president. Easy. But before I could even raise my hand, she continued, This question seemed too hard for girls, so do any of the boys know the answer? What? How could she say that? What was with her male chauvinist attitude? This put me in a bad mood, so during dinner, I decided to moan to Dad about it. He needed to know how ridiculous his school was, so I told him how I hated his dumb rules and how sexist the teachers were. He glared at me and told me that there weren't enough girls at the school to warrant a separate uniform. Moreover, if girls dressed up, it would only cause distractions for the boys. As for the history teacher, it was just because boys often have larger knowledge than girls on this matter so maybe she just didn't want to embarrass the girls in case they couldn't give out the right answer. Ha! Huh, what kind of argument was this? It wasn't the olden days. Jeez, these oldies needed to get with the decade. Okay, fine. I'll prove to the whole school and all the teachers that there weren't only boys here. The next day, I gathered all the girls from my class. Um, in fact, there were only two of them, Angela and Carly, and we met up in the only girly place the girls' restroom. Then I told them, Hey girls, welcome to our club, The Doll. I think it's about time we fought for our rights and presence in this school. As girls matter too, right? At first, they both seemed worried. I get it, they didn't want to get in trouble. But I soon managed to convince them that it'd be fine. Fun even. So they came around and agreed. First up, it was time to do something about this awful uniform. We tied up our shirts to expose our waists, and I helped the others put subtle makeup on, so our skin looked like it had a natural glow to it. Then, we all put glittery hair accessories and colorful scrunchies in our hair to jazz up our updos. Carly looked in the mirror and said, Okay, maybe our uniform isn't so bad. And we all burst out laughing. Now, it was time to make an entrance. We all walked along the corridor together. 
all the boys and girls turned around to look at us with admiring eyes and open mouths. One boy even dropped his stack of books on the floor, and another one walked into his locker. Ha! The charm of girls was absolutely irresistible, right? Soon, we became a popular group around the school. The boys wanted to talk to us, and girls from other classes also joined our group, and I showed them how to style up their uniforms. It's great, right? Yep, there's a problem. The teachers were old fogies who didn't appreciate style. One day, before class, one teacher came up to me and my friends and accused us of ruining the dignity of the uniform and of exerting negative influences on other students. So I told her, we aren't violating any of the school's previous rules. We wear the uniform, we keep our top button done up, and we have the regulation hairstyle. Dressing up is a girl's prerogative. Besides, if boys are distracted, it's their fault, not ours. So you can't blame us for that. After that, I seemed to become a thorn in the side of all the teachers. In every subject, I would always be asked to answer the most difficult questions. And, of course, I didn't know the right answer. I mean, nobody knew it. And then they would give me a gloating look. Ugh, how childish they were. Another time, I was in a lunch queue, and when it was my turn, I chose barbecue chicken drumsticks, as they're my favorite. However, to my surprise, the canteen service said there was no chicken left, then put this weird oatmeal slop on my plate. Ew! I could see there were loads of chicken left, so why was she being so unreasonable? I skipped the gross slop, so as soon as I got home from school, I was so hungry, so I made myself a huge bowl of noodles. Dad saw me devouring the food, then smiled and asked, Has causing trouble at school all day made you that hungry? In between my mouthfuls of food, I told him what had happened with the teacher, and in the canteen. He just smiled and said it was because I was too stubborn. What kind of an excuse was that? I mean, when was starving students a good idea? The next morning, I drowsily walked into class and sat down at my desk. That's when I realized I'd forgotten my phone. Well, this totally sucked, so I moaned to Angela. These teachers make my life a misery, and now I don't even have my phone. Today is going to be a long one. Suddenly, someone knocked on my desk. I looked up and saw my dad, aka the principal, standing there in front of me. I was so surprised that before I could say anything, he said, Hey, Cupcake, you left your phone at home. Oh, and I brought you breakfast, as you know how grumpy you get when you're hungry. Then he put my phone and a sandwich on my desk, stroked my hair, then left. What was he doing? Did he forget his promise? Needless to say, my classmates looked shocked. Angela stared at me and said, Huh? The principal is your dad? Unbelievable! Why didn't you tell us? I sat there open-mouthed. This was the most awkward thing ever. Thanks a lot, Dad. But little did I know, that was just the start of a new chapter of craziness. Things were about to get even worse. And oh boy, you wouldn't want to miss out on that. I was on my way to Julia's house for a study sesh, when out of nowhere, I found myself flying onto the ground. I was so stunned, I didn't even see the ball that had hit me, or the fact there was a cute guy rushing over to check if I was okay. He helped me up and apologized. Then he pulled a band-aid out of his bag. Oh my, who is he? I'd scraped my hand pretty badly, but I almost didn't mind because now I was face to face with a gorgeous guy. In fact, I was so busy staring at him and blushing that I didn't even notice Julia marching towards us. Um, what are you two doing? Turns out the cute guy was Callum, Julia's boyfriend. Ugh, Julia. Of course, every nice thing is always hers. I'm Jenny, by the way, and that lucky girl is Julia. She's the daughter of the richest guy in town, Mr. Walsh. We're supposed to be friends, but we honestly have nothing in common. I mean, my family is pretty poor. It's not our fault, though. My dad sadly passed away. And so it's just me and my mom trying to make ends meet. Julia, on the other hand, has a silver spoon shoved down her throat. 
but fate still brought us together. I know it's kind of wrong, but that night I couldn't stop thinking about Callum. He now, in fact, gave me motivation for the next study session with Bossy Julia, as maybe he would be there again. I even put on makeup and skipping on the way to her house the next day. But, well, it was all for nothing, because Callum was nowhere to be seen. Instead, I had to sit and listen to Julia go on and on about her trip to Paris. I pretended that I was okay, but actually, I always dreamed of visiting the city of light and gazing up at the Eiffel Tower ever since watching Emily in Paris. Dream on, Jenny. Anyway, Julia was incessant. She loved making me look like a fool, and even said, Aw, poor Jenny. Maybe one day you'll get to go to Paris. But until then, you can just look at all my photos. Honestly, why was she so cruel to me? Last year around my birthday, she'd even shown me a fashion magazine and asked me which dress I liked best. I thought she was buying gifts for me, but instead, she showed up at my party in the exact dress I pointed out. I couldn't believe it. She just winked at me and laughed, and I seriously wanted to scream at her. Anyway, after looking at about one billion Paris pics, Mr. Walsh appeared. He looked happy to see us sitting so close and studying together. If only he knew the truth. But I had to pretend I had a lot of fun with Julia and helping her study, at least for his sake. Mr. Walsh was a good friend of our family, and ever since my dad passed away, he'd been looking out for me, and was even paying my school fees. I couldn't let him down. But you know what? I actually started to get excited to go over to Julia's now, as the thought of bumping into Callum again gave me butterflies. I even got myself a new hairstyle, but he was never there, and I always left feeling disappointed. Then one time, after school, it started to rain dogs and cats, and I had to run for it. Then suddenly I felt an umbrella over my head. Guess what? It was Callum coming to the rescue. It was like something out of a romantic movie. He even offered me a lift home. My heart was racing so hard I was afraid he'd hear it. I just sat there in silence dripping rain all over his clean car. I even caught him looking over at me a few times, and my heart felt like it was going to leap out of my chest. He pulled up at my house, so I was about to get out when he touched my arm and said, can I get your number? I was confused. I mean, wasn't he Julia's boyfriend? He then explained that he was just hired to be her fake boyfriend so that all the flirty boys would get out of her way. Wow, I couldn't believe it. He asked me to keep it a secret as Julia would end us both if the story got out. Okay, it all made sense now. That's why he never came over to her house. I felt so happy. Over the next few days, Callum and I chatted a lot on the phone. And then eventually, he asked me out on a date. We went to the fun fair, and right away he held my hand. It made me feel so special, and I never wanted him to let go. We were having so much fun, then a familiar voice pierced the air. Well, well, well. Isn't that my dear friend, Jenny? I felt dread rush through my whole body. We turned around, and there was Julia and her girl gang all standing there with their arms crossed. Callum dropped my hand and rushed to Julia's side. It was all her, babe. You gotta see the messages she sent. She's been flirting with me for weeks. It's pathetic. Whoa, was he for real? A second ago, he was about to lean in for a kiss. And now he was bad-mouthing me? How could he be so two-faced? I tried to explain to Julia, but she wouldn't listen. She just called me a traitor in front of everyone and told all her friends to lock up their boyfriends in case I try it on with one of theirs next. I was devastated. Everyone was staring at me and judging me. Ugh, if only I could vanish into thin air right now. And as I was thinking about where I could escape to, a guy appeared, grabbed my wrist, and pulled me away. It was Stefan, the guy who lived across the road from me. I didn't understand why he helped me, but I was so grateful that he did. He walked me home and tried to cheer me up by saying how his mom used to love our bakery so much and that the carrot cake my mom made was his mom's fave. This made me smile, thinking back on all those happy times in our family bakery. When my dad had died, we'd had to sell it to pay off some debt, and life had become quite difficult. Luckily, Mr. Walsh was helping out, but after what just happened with Julia, I wasn't sure I'd be able to face him. The next day at school, everyone was staring at me. I couldn't even find a place to sit at lunch. What had I done? I'd ruined everything. And then it got worse. My phone beeped. It was Mr. Walsh. He said he was so disappointed in me and that I no longer needed to come and tutor his daughter. 
I wanted to cry, and at the same time I felt so much relief. But then I read on, and he said, I'm sorry, but I can't keep my promise anymore. I'll continue to subsidize your school fees, but you'll have to figure something out for college. Good luck. My heart plummeted. Not only had I been shunned by everyone at school and backstabbed by Callum, but now the door to college was being slammed in my face, too. What would I do? My life was over. I felt so sick. I just walked out of the canteen and went home. I didn't dare go to school over the next few days. I was miserable. And just when I'd given up all hope, there was a knock at my door. It was Callum. What was he doing here? He said he was sorry for what had happened and that he missed me so much. Then he asked me if I'd be interested in being his secret girlfriend. What in the world? I was so angry, I wanted to slam the door in his face. But he was fast enough to catch my hand, which took me aback. At that exact moment, Stefan happened to walk past. Seeing me standing there with Callum, his face changed and he immediately walked away. Oh, no. I definitely couldn't let him misunderstand anything about me anymore. He's the only friend I had left. I yanked my arm away from Callum and chased after Stefan. I finally caught up with him and blurted out how I'd been feeling like the whole world was against me and that I didn't know what to do. He told me to calm down, then we went to sit on a bench in the park, as he let me confide everything in him. By the time I finished talking, I was on the verge of tears. Then he said, Listen, Jenny, you're better than this. Don't dim to fit in with those people at your school. Good people will see you for the real you. You're strong, and you can get through anything. I know you can. He was right. I was better than this. I didn't need to sink as low as Julia and her friends, and I certainly didn't need to rely on Mr. Walsh's money. I'd figure this out by myself, like I always did. So I applied for a part-time job at a coffee shop. Earning my own money felt so good. Suddenly I felt free, and I knew everything was going to be okay. But then one day when I was working, Julia and her gang came in. They still weren't over what happened, and in front of everyone, they brought up what I'd done to humiliate me. And they even recorded it, and I couldn't stop shaking. This was too much. That's when I threw a cup of coffee all over Julia and ran out of there. Julia shouted after me that she was going to tell my mom everything I'd done. Without a doubt, Julia really did it. She even sent my mom photos of me and Callum at the fair. And well, my mom didn't take it well. I rushed home to try and explain after mom yelled at me over the phone. But then I couldn't find mom anywhere. I called her phone and a man answered. He said my mom was in a hospital after she fainted? Oh dear good God! I got to the hospital immediately and found out that she had collapsed from shock, but thankfully she was okay. She had to stay in the rest of the day to be monitored, so I went to get us both a cup of coffee. That's when I saw him. Callum! He was in the ward next door sitting with some girl. I almost dropped the coffee out of shock. They looked close. I waited until he'd left, and then I went to ask the girl if Callum was her boyfriend. Well, turns out, they'd been dating for two years already. So he was triple cheating? The girl deserved to know the truth, so I took a deep breath and told her everything. She was so upset. We decided to get our own back. So the girl called Callum and asked him to come back. As soon as he arrived, we confronted him and got the truth once and for all. He was never Julia's real boyfriend. In fact, here's the shocking part. He was hired by Julia to pretend to date me and ruin my life. Apparently, she was jealous of how much attention her dad gave me since my dad had died, and that her dad constantly compared her to me. He kept apologizing to his girlfriend, saying how much he loved her, and that he only agreed to help Julia so that he could earn some money to help pay for her medical bills. I was stunned. Callum was so apologetic and said he'd come clean about everything. He posted it on the school forum to clear my name and to everyone to see the ugly truth about Julia. And of course, when Mr. Walsh saw it, he made her come and apologize to me. And he also apologized himself and offered to pay my college fees again. Do you think I accepted his offer? Of course not. I was standing on my own feet now, and there was no going back. I didn't need anyone's help. So you might be wondering how I could afford college. Surely not on my coffee shop salary, right? Well, after graduating high school, I realized how much I missed the bakery. That was where I truly felt happy. So I decided to study to become a pastry chef, and now my mom and I have opened a new bakery. I've never been happier, and there's one last thing I want to share. Oh, in fact, 
here he is. Hey, Stefan, I've made your mom's fave. Let's go surprise her. I couldn't stop smiling as Stefan took the carrot cake, kissed my cheek, and we headed for his car. Life is so much more simple now, and sweet, and I love it.